and welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. So today we're going to go through Cirrus um, and um, we'll also go through the exercises because the exercise will feed into Cirrus. So we'll go through the exercises and once we've done that, we'll then deep dive into the Cirrus tool. So this is really where it starts to become real, where we start to collate, combine all the data we've, we've collected, calculations we've done, and actually see an inventory start to uh, build up. So quick recap from last week, um, then we'll do, we'll go through the workbook probably for the first hour or so. We, we want to go through the workbook step by step to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, and then we'll spend the last two hours uh, going into Cirrus. So quick recap from last week, um, we covered IPPU and the Foley sectors, uh, covering both the theory of IPPU. We did an exercise um, applying the scaling approach to product use emissions. And again, for industrial process emissions, that really depends upon your own city and activities taking place in your city. Um, and for that, it'd be really good for yourself to um, talk to colleagues um, and understand what, what, what industry is taking place in my city. Maybe also talk to the National Inventory Compiler and ask them, are any of the, these big industries um, occurring within my city boundaries? If they are, uh, try and talk to them to, uh, to estimate the size of their activities. If not, perhaps try to talk to the National Compiler um, and use that to, to, to collate your emissions. For product use, the scaling approach is usually um, a very fair one because those activities, refrigerators, aerosols, asthma inhalers, um, electronics uh, equipment, they're usually very proportional to population or GDP. So you can usually scale those from national data, but for industrial processes, I would also recommend you do a bottom-up approach where you identify which industry is active within my city boundary. Um, if any, um, and then based emissions um, on the level of activity taking place in your city. Next, we covered a folio, which is the land use sector, looking at emissions from livestock, from land use change and other aggregate sources like agriculture and forestry. Um, we did a practical where we looked at livestock emissions and I gave you a, a, um, a, a number of animals that were, were um, present in your city and to estimate emissions um, for both enteric emission and um, enteric fermentation and manure management. Um, and you probably discover that's a fairly easy process. There are some very uh, easy to use uh, emission factors and all you really need to know is how many animals and what type of animals um, are present in my city. And that's usually your local authority will have that count or your industry compiler will have that count as well. It's usually very low, but if you do have farms uh, or open land in your, in your city boundary, um, you should be able to count the number of animals or at least estimate them and then estimate emissions that way. For land use change, this really depends upon how much land has changed use um, over the last 20 years. Um, and again, this is for you to discuss with your planners, look at the, the, the land use plans for your city and try to understand how much land has changed over the last 20 years. The formulas are given in GPC, they're a bit more complex, uh, but as long as you have um, the, the type of land, uh, some basic other information about the land, it should be fairly easy to calculate. And don't forget to apply the emission changes equally over those 20 years, um, because it's assumed that not the, 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 this, the carbon stock doesn't change within one year, but it takes a time for the carbon stock to, to, to adjust. And then aggregate sources really depends upon activities taking place on the land. If you're harvesting wood, if you're uh, cultivating rice, for example, um, that, that really depends upon the activities taking place within your city. And again, your planning team would be a good uh, starting point because they'll know exactly how the land is being used. Right to the end, we then covered other scope, other scope three sources, um, which is optional. Um, and again, it's it's very advanced accounting. But if you wanted to get a more complete picture of what emissions your city is driving, not just in your city but outside as well, then measuring scope three emissions could be a very useful thing to do. Um, there are, there are some methodologies out there. There are some case studies out there. Um, I would encourage you to read those. Uh, but again, this is optional. Uh, this is in May in the, in the GPC terminology. Um, and so focus on basic, then basic plus, and then perhaps scope three emissions as well. So that was IPPU and Afolu. Before we move on, any questions from last week at all? No, it doesn't look like it, but please always use the, the chat function if you, have, if you do have any questions uh, on that. Um, OK, so that then takes us to Cirrus and module seven, module G. Uh, so we're three quarters of the way through and just the last week to go. 
Um, next week, or sorry, on Wednesday, we're talking about how we use an inventory, how we manage an inventory. But today's really all about um, how we compile an inventory using the calculations, the data we've, we've collected over the last couple of weeks. As I mentioned, before we do that, I'd like to go through the workbook first. Um, I gave feedback on those workbooks that I received. Um, and um, I think most of it is really good um, and you're clearly understanding uh, the process, but there were some 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 mistakes in there um, and some sections that weren't completed by everyone. So I just want to go through the exercise step by step. Uh, so I'll share my workbook with you and I'll share the workbook afterwards, which has all the answers. Again, they're, they're the answers for um, and I've used the uh, for 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 my size of city the same data as for for KL. Um, so bear in mind your data might be different based upon your the size of your city and the scaling factor you've chosen, um, as well as the AR factors you've chosen. So just bear that in mind. But I'll share the answers after today's call so you can compare um, and and contrast as well. Um, so we'll go through module C, module D, module E, module F, and table three, and I'll take you through. Um, sort of all those answers um, in turn. I'll also want to focus on table three, which only a few of you attempted. So just want to make sure you're clear on how we compile um, that table. So let me just share, swap my screens, just one second, and I'll bring open um, my workbook so I can take you through that. Uh, just bear with me one second. Uh, share screen. And again, any questions as we go through this, please do use the chat function or uh, or just um, speak up uh, and un unmute yourself. OK, so this is the workbook. Let me just make the screen, my screen bigger anyway. Um, OK, so you're very familiar with, with the workbook. Um, so I want to go through, as I mentioned, modules C through to F and also table three. So in module C, the task you had was to copy data from the National Energy Balance Report into uh, this first table and to convert the data from kilotons of oil equivalents to terajoules. Um, this is a very important conversion. Um, KTOE is often used by industry, um, but it's more difficult in calculations um, and very few emission factors are in terms of kilotons of oil equivalents. Therefore, we need to do some conversion. This is an easy conversion um, and the conversion is simply to multiply the kiloton of oil equivalent figure by 41.868. So what we do is we populate the data from table 29 of the National, National Energy Balance Report um, for all the activities occurring, and they're the ones shown here. We then multiply them by 41.868. That gives us total terajoules for Malaysia. OK, so next step we need to then is scale that data. So what we've done is the next step is for you to copy the data across from this table into this table. So this is the converted terajoule data. What I noticed some of you did is you would just automatically uh, say put 42 in there. So you would copy the number and enter it in here. I would also recommend that you use links. So you do equal and you click the cell function because if anything should change, um, then it's automatically updated in your Excel workbook. So try and avoid hard copies where you're copying the number. Always try to enter a cell link um, so that it copies across so that if anything changes, if you made a mistake here, for example, you just need to update it here and it gets updated everywhere else as well. Whereas if you just copy the numbers, um, then then you need to update them every single time you make a correction. So always try and uh, use uh, a, a, a linked cell rather than just copying the number across. So for residential, we have the converted ter terajoule data here for the four um, fuels that are being used. Uh, we copy those into this into these um, this table here, and we then choose a scaling factor. In this case, it's residential, and population is always a good scaling factor for residential emissions. So I have the national value, 31.6 million. I have my value for KL, which is the value that I'm using, but this could be any value that you choose to use. In this case, it's um, 1.7 million. The ratio is 6%. Um, I then multiply the national activity data by that ratio to get a data from our city, in this case, two terajoules for natural gas and over 6,000 terajoules of electricity. So that's for residential. I do the same for commercial and industrial. I simply copy the data from this column, the converted terajoule data. Um, I copy that across into 
um, this column here. Uh, and again, I'm using dynamic links, so I'm, I'm equal the cell, the cell number, not the actual value. Because it's commercial industrial, um, I've decided to use GDP as my scaling factor. I noticed quite a few of you used population. That's fine. Um, but because commercial value is often measured in terms of output, um, financial output, um, I think GDP is often a more accurate uh, factor, but population is perfectly right as well. But one thing you notice here immediately is if we use the GDP as a scaling factor, for, again for KL, we notice that whereas for population, KL had 6% of the national population, they have 20% of GDP. Um, this is not uncommon for a capital city. Uh, a lot of high value industry is based in the city, a lot of financing um, and a lot of businesses. So this is not surprising. But if you were to use population, you can see the impact on your results because I'm now applying 20% of the national value. So I'm scaling it by 20%. If I use population, I'd be scaling by 6%. That is a, has a huge impact on your results. So again, an example of where decisions you make will have a big impact on your results. Simply the choice of a scaling factor will impact this, this number. So if I use population, this would be 6%. Using GDP, it's 20%. So again, pay very careful attention to your scaling factor. I would always recommend anything to do with households and residents, use population. Anything to do with businesses or industry, use GDP. So we find this, we find the ratio, we apply the ratio to the national data to find my city data, in this case, over 200 terajoules of natural gas and over 30,000 terajoules of electricity. We do exactly the same for manufacturing industry. And again, I'm applying GDP as a scaling factor because it's industry um, and not population. OK, so then moving on to table 1.C, and this is where I'm going to copy and manipulate the emission factors. So I copy the emission factors from BER3, from table A2. Then because for CO2, uh, it's in tons of carbon, and I need tons of carbon dioxide. So there's a little mistake here. This should be CO2. I need it in tons of carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide has one molecule of carbon and two of oxygen. It's therefore heavier than simply one molecule of carbon. So I need to multiply this by 44 over 12. That conversion only applies for this one because it's in carbon and we're converting it into carbon dioxide. So we're only applying that for carbon and we're going from tons of carbon per terajoule to tons of CO2 per terajoule. So it's already in tons. The only conversion here is from carbon to carbon dioxide. So we multiply all of this by 44 over 12. For methane and nitrous oxide, the emission factor was in kilograms. So initially, all we, all we need, need to do to convert from kilograms to tons is to divide by 1,000. So we divide this by 1,000 and we divide the one for N2O by 1,000 as well. OK, so those for now are the only conversions we're applying to the emission factors. So you get all of them in terms of tons of CO2 per terajoule, tons of methane per terajoule and tons of nitrous oxide per terajoule. For electricity, the emission factor um, was um, in megawatt hours um, and we had to convert that to terajoules. So we divide by 0 0.0036. Now in the slides, I indicated this should be a multiplication. That should be a division. Uh, so if you made that mistake, don't worry, but please do correct it in your workbook. This should be divide by rather than multiply by. OK, so now we have our activity data scaled to our city boundary. We have the emission factors and next up we need to multiply the data to get our emissions. So we do this um, by multiplying the emission factor by the activity data. And for carbon dioxide, it's a very straightforward calculation. We're simply multiplying the activity data by the emission factor. In this case, we're multiplying the natural gas, which is H in cell D56, sorry, in H25, which we, sorry, let me just click on the, the formula. So H25 is back up here, which is where you're using two terajoules of natural gas multiplied by the emission factor for CO2, which is 56.1, and that gives us uh, 133 tons of carbon dioxide. We do the same for the other emission factors. We multiply the activity data by the emission factor in tons of CO2 per terajoule. 
We do the same for methane and nitrous oxide. Uh, we multiply the same activity data. So again, we're using H25, but this time by the, the emission factor for methane in tons of methane per terajoule and same for N2O. We then need to do one more conversion, which is to convert uh, the methane into tons of CO2 equivalent. And again, remember, methane is, is often 25 times more powerful than CO2, so we need to convert that. By multiple, we do that by multiplying it by their global warming potential factor, which will depend upon the IPCC assessment report that you're choosing. That could be IPCC report four or report number five. It'll affect your values slightly, not too much, but it'll affect them slightly. I'm using uh, the values for report four, so I'm multiplying methane by 25, and I'm multiplying the tons of nit nitrous oxide by 298. So that then gives me um, emissions in terms of tons of CO2 equivalent for CO2, for methane, and for nitrous oxide. I then add them together to get my total emissions, which is in this case for natural gas, 133, for LPG, uh, almost 170,000, for kerosene, 514, and for electricity, uh, it's, it's over a million. I then add them up and I get these values for scope one and scope two emissions. Okay, so that's for residential. Again, electricity is always scope two and any primary fuel, any fossil fuel is always scope one. So these get added to scope one and this one goes into scope two. We do exactly the same for commercial and industrial. Um, we multiply uh, the activity data by CO2 emission factor. Same for methane, but then we, we always convert them into tons of CO2 equivalents, add them up, and the same for uh, manufacturing. Um, so, and then we get, you know, you, you get some fairly high values, but you also see the difference in terms of numbers, uh, much higher emissions from electricity um, than from scope one, and that's often because you're using quite a bit of energy in air conditioning um, and cooling, uh, which obviously comes from electricity. So that's um, exercise one, uh, where you calculate scope one and scope two for residential, commercial, and for industries. The next step is to uh, complete table three, and I've copied table three at the bottom of this table now. So you have that when you when you get this workbook. And so I'm simply, I've got these numbers, so scope one for residential and scope two for residential. I copy these across into the table here. And here we have scope one for residential and scope two for residential. So I copy those across into there. I do the same for commercial and institutional for scope one and scope two, and the same for industrial scope one and scope two. I then add NE for scope three. We didn't measure them. We don't have to because they're not basic. So I put NE. Uh, for the other sources in green and red, I do need to measure them. But in this case, we haven't. And I've assumed they're not occurring. So I'm going to put NO. This is my assumption that may not apply to your city, but for now, if you can do the same, put in NO for not occurring um, because we can't put any because it's a basic source and we cannot say we haven't estimated it. If it is occurring, we estimate it. If it's not, we put NO. I've also then provided a comment on the methodology. And in this case, I said I've scaled national data to the city boundary using population and GDP. That's all it requires. Um, you should always include a comment on your methodology, um, and this is for two reasons. One, so you remember your approach yourself, but also be so whoever's reading this can understand your methodology and can make sense of it. So, but it doesn't need to be a whole paragraph, just one sentence is enough. So I just, I've skilled the data, uh, national data to my city boundary using population and GDP, and I provided my data sources the National Energy Balance Report, as well as birth three. So that's exercise one, um, and, and that is the, the GPC table. Um, I noticed there are two questions in the chat box, so let me just answer those two questions. Um, from Deep, talk about GDP. We do not have GDP data, but it's the of KL. Can we estimate city GDP downscaling the state GDP by population or GDP per capita? So it's a good question. So as I mentioned, GDP is a preferred uh, scaling factor for cities. Uh, for sorry for uh, commercial and industrial activity if you don't have gdp then yes use population um you could also um you know make an estimate or use um you know look at maybe the the the, the total number of businesses you've got out of the total businesses in kl for example 
So there are other ways as well, but if you don't have GDP data, um, yes, you can use population, but maybe also talk to your national ministry or uh, your economics department to see if they have a proxy or another value you could use to estimate economic activity within your city boundary. Uh, but again, this goes back to those principles where you use what is available to you and don't spend, you know, it's not worth spending, you know, a whole year just to get a local GDP value. Um, it's just not, not worth it. But just try and always test out, do my, does my scaling factor, does it make sense for this activity? Uh, and if it does, use it. If it doesn't, then just think, well, can I use a better scaling factor or not? But it depends on the data you have available. If you don't have GDP data available, um, then, then think of something else. But again, one thing I do want to point out in the case of KL here is we had a big difference in the scaling factor depending whether we use population um, or whether we use GDP. So if the population is 6%, for GDP it's 20%. That has a big impact on your inventory. Um, that's a 14% difference on your inventory. So your choice of scaling factor that does have an impact, but make sure you choose one that is available and that is relevant to your city context. Uh, and there's a comment there uh, that there uh, may be another method method of doing so. And again, that, that's for you to decide. Uh, but definitely talk to the experts. There are the people in your economics department, at your national, national ministries, maybe universities. Maybe there's a paper published somewhere that estimates economic output pi by regional, region by region or by city. Um, so definitely talk to some other experts out there uh, to see if they have some suggestions. Um, because the impact here is quite big, and I suspect for the other cities it's quite big as well, because most economic activity is is, is in the Klang Valley. So, um, so do bear in mind that this could have a big, big impact on your on your total emissions. OK, any questions on Module C on exercise on stationary energy emissions? No, then next I'd like to go to Module D on transportation. And this was a bit easier. So in this case, again, we had to copy the, the data from uh, the National Energy Balance Report in kilotons of oil equivalents. We had to convert them into terajoules, again, multiplying them by 41.868. We then copied this data across to the next table, and we identified a scaling factor to scale the data. Um, in this case, you could, you could use either population or GDP. Um, it's, we're looking at road traffic, uh, which could be driven by people or by, by business. It depends upon whether you think most traffic is results from from industry or from people i've used gdp here this could also be population again for you to decide based upon your knowledge of your city um, and again i've used the values for kl and uh, arrived at a scaling factor of 20 percent so i multiply the national data convert it into terajoules by 20 percent to get my city data i then identify the emission factors again for co2 i'm multiplying them by 44 over 12 to take into account the difference in molecular weight between carbon and carbon dioxide. Um, and again, just always look carefully at the units. In this case, it's T, tons of carbon by terajoules, and we need it in tons of CO2 per terajoule. So again, just need to change this to CO2. Uh, so multiplying by 44 over 12. For methane and nitrous oxide, we're simply dividing by 1,000 to get from kilograms of terajoule to tons per terajoule. Um, and then we also had an emission factor for biodiesel. Um, and the reason I put this in grey is because it, it's, it's biogenic carbon. And therefore, we're not including that in a calculation because biogenic carbon um, does not get added to your GPC inventory because it gets sequestered again during the growth phase. So biogenic carbon doesn't get added, but the methane emissions and nitrous oxide emissions from burning biodiesel do get added because they don't get returned back into uh, the land. It's only CO2 get, that gets taken up again by plants, not methane or nitrous oxide. So whenever you have a biofuel, um, the, the, the carbon dioxide bit doesn't get counted. The methane and nitrous oxide emissions do get counted because they don't go back into, they don't get sequestered by the growth phase of, of plants. We then multiply emissions. Uh, again, we're multiplying the activity data by the emission factor. And again, applying uh, the uh, GWP value for methane and for nitrous oxide. So again, multiplied by 25 for methane, and in my case, by 298 uh, for nitrous oxide. And I then get my total emissions. Um, again, I've not, I've calculated the 
the um, biogenic carbon, but I've not totaled the biogenic carbon. So you can see here, uh, in terms of total emissions, I've just added methane, uh, which is cell E38 uh, with cell G38. Um, so I've just added methane emission, the methane nitroxide there. We're not counting biodiesel, and you get to a total of 12.12 12, um, uh, uh, 12, uh, megatons of um, carbon dioxide. So that's for transport. Um, and again, that's based on national data and a scaling factor. Uh, then we moved on to um, railways, and this was a more complicated calculation. And this is really where your role as a detective comes in, in trying to find different bits of data here and there to make sure the, the units align so you can, you, you can do the full calculation. So we had the activity data uh, from birth three, total number of trips. Um, again, I used um, a scaling factor for GDP. In this case, um, I, I looked at the, um, no, so this is population. And this is the population just in the Klang Valley. Uh, so uh, 1.7 million for KL, over 7.5 million for the whole Klang Valley. That's a ratio of 24%. And I simply multiply the total trips in the Klang Valley by the ratio to get to the number for KL for, for my city boundary. I then copy this number across by using a dynamic link by using equals H47. It then copies it across automatically. I then found some data for the average length per trip, 9.8 kilometers per trip, which gives me a total distance. Um, I then copy this data across into the next table. And again, using a dynamic link equals E52. I then found a figure from the UK government on the energy used per passenger kilometer of 0 0.3, 0 0.13 um, kilowatt hours per kilometer. I multiply these two to get a total number of kilowatt hours of energy consumed. I then divide by 1,000 to get to megawatt hours. Uh, because my emission factor is in megawatt hours, I divide this by 1,000 to get to megawatt hours. Again, I copy this figure across into the next line, again using a dynamic link, equals G58. Uh, I then have the emission factor from the, um, this was the um, uh, CB report uh, of 0.585. I multiply the two to get tons of carbon dioxide. And finally, uh, megatons of carbon dioxide, which is 0 0.04. So those are my emissions for on-road transportation and for um, for railways for the, in the using the induced activity method only for scope two. I then copy these data across into table three as well. So let's scroll down. So I've copied the emissions from scope one across, which is which was the 12.12 uh, megatons of carbon dioxide, um, and I've copied the um, the data across for scope two for railways uh, of 36,000 tons of carbon dioxide. I'm then assuming, um, again, to complete the table, I'm assuming uh, there, there's minimal um, electric vehicles at the moment in, in my city. Uh, where there is, I'm assuming they're going to be charging a home, therefore I'm allocating this to 1.1.2. And I'm going to say this is included elsewhere. You could also say not occurring because, because the numbers are so small. Uh, for everything else, for scope three, I've used not estimated again because I don't have to, and therefore that's the easiest way to report the emissions. Uh, they may be happening, I don't know, I've just not estimated them, and I can use any because it's basic, uh, it's basic plus not uh, basic. Um, then for railways, I've assumed um, the activity in my city is all electric railway. Any diesel powered railways, I've assumed is either freight and doesn't go through my city, so therefore it's not occurring. I'm landlocked, um, there's no, no waterborne activities, and the airport is outside the city boundary, therefore there's no aviation emissions. Um, so I put NO for all those activities. For off-road transportation, um, there's hardly any off-road in my city to start with, but if there is, then I assume it's included in the fuel cells method for on-road transportation, so included in 2.1.1, and the same for any off-road electric vehicles included in 1.1.2. I then total these numbers uh, again because this is nothing. This will the total will equal this scope one, and same for 2.2. I then add a methodology again for uh, 2.1. I've scaled national data um, and the data sources, the NEB report in birth three, and for the railways, I've scaled the Klang Valley data using data in birth three. I could provide some additional data here uh, that I've used other data sources to find 
uh, average distance and energy per distance, um, which, which would be better. Uh, but for now, I've just given a very short summary there of the methodology. So that's um, exercise module D uh, for road and rail transportation, and also how you copy that data across into table three. Uh, there's a question, um, again, I think going back to the scaling factor, um, since you have several option example, we have option example population, GDP, how can we make sure the consistency in cities reporting? Um, again, this is a very good question. If, if, and this is where there's a, often there's a difference between city reporting and the interest of, of consistency across inventories, because if, if you're doing GDP, they're doing population, you can't really compare your results. So you may want to make a decision. Uh, that you all use the same scaling factors for the same activities. Um, and that would allow uh, for more consistency between inventories, better comparisons. Um, but that would need that would probably need you to make a decision and agree collectively uh, to take that approach. From my, but that would certainly be my recommendation if you have the choice. And there is the ability to agree that before you start, let's use the same scaling factors for the same activities using the same data sources. Um, that would be fantastic and that would be my strong recommendation. Um, but that probably will require someone to coordinate and someone to make sure you're using the same data source um, and also that everyone trusts those data sources. We've had examples where, um, you know, cities in the same country have used different data for population um, because one person does, one city doesn't trust the national data, the other one doesn't trust the academic data and they each choose their own data source that they trust and they feel better reflects their city. So whilst it's it's certainly something I'd recommend, um, also be aware that some cities may not trust all data sources or not find it reflects their city and therefore choose to use their own data, uh, which makes that comparison more difficult. Um, but again, it goes back to the principles, what's relevant for each individual city. Uh, but a very good question, and I would definitely encourage um, sort of all of you to have this discussion afterwards um, to discuss whether you'd like to agree to use the same scaling factors and the same data uh, to make sure your inventories are comparable um, and consistent. That's a, that's a great question. Um, any any other questions on transportation? OK, so let's move on to the next sector, which is the waste sector. Uh, module E. There we go. So this was um, where we used uh, the Cirrus calculators uh, to estimate emissions from landfill from bio by biological treatment, from incineration, and from wastewater. Um, now, I gave you some of the data, and some of the data you had to calculate. Um, I filled these in in this table, which basically you had to calculate the total waste deposited or treated from the assumptions I've given here and I gave on the, on the slides. I've populated them here, so if you haven't done these yet, um, please go back into those calculators. You have all the data here to do the, to do the calculation. And again, this is the number I got. Uh, from those calculations um, based upon, um, again, scaling for KL using the KL population data. But again, you might want to adjust that, in which case just go into this formula and change your population figure here um, to your city and you'll get the data. Um, in this case, I found a figure that KL, uh, sort of Malaysia um, generates um, or sends, uh, generates 38,200 tonnes of waste per day. Um, of that, 17.5% is recycled and the remaining 89% is sent to landfill. So my calculation was to multiply 38,200 by 85% because the rest is, um, is, is recycled. So that, that should, sorry, that's be 82.45. Um, because the rest is recycled by 365 because it's a daily figure and then by 89 because um, that is the rest is, uh, that's what's sent to landfill. So that gives you your, your, your number there. Put those into Cirrus. Um, and you'll get uh, a similar value to, to this number. For bio by biological treatment, we had a figure of um, 2.49 gigatons of waste treated uh, biologically. Um, I've then again scaled that figure to population um, and assumed half is composted, half is sent to anaerobic digestion. For incineration, again, I had a figure of 210, 210 tons of waste per day. Uh, multiply that by 365 in your scaling factor, and I found data for the waste composition as well. And for wastewater, um, that was all done through assumptions. Um, the one thing I did assume is to change the percentage of urban high 
and urban low income. Um, again, because I assumed um, sort of my city was generally wealthier than, than other cities in, in Malaysia, and therefore I overrode the default values. That's your choice to say, actually, do I want to stick to the default values, or do I think I've got a case here to adjust them? Um, and it could be 50-50, it could be 90-10, um, it could be, so let's stick to the default values, that's for you to decide. This was my assumption, um, just for the, for, the, for the sake of this exercise. Um, and, and using those assumptions, I got to this, this figure. So those were the figures using Cirrus. And hopefully you realize it's a fairly easy calculation. You need some data, but the calculator does most of it for you. Next up, we then skilled national data. Um, and again, that was, um, again, a very simple calculation. Um, We've got the total tons of CO2 uh, from birth three, uh, the national population again in birth three, um, and I'm just going to change this. Uh, to get um, my city population data, again, which is the, the KL boundary. Um, so a very simple approximation where I take the national emissions from birth three and I scale it according to population to get the value for my city. So I get those numbers there. Um, and then the, the last exercise uh, we, we did um, was we looked at the proxy data we did back in module B. And in, in the second week, um, we scaled the data for Kuala Lumpur. Um, so I've copied those numbers across. Uh, and in this case, I haven't scaled them. They're, they're exactly as, as were reported by, by KL. So I can then compare the values. And then once you've done that, the table at the bottom should give you a comparison between those three methodologies. And this is really useful data. Like, again, none of these answers are going to be perfect because they're all making assumptions. One is using calculators, one is using national data, one is using a proxy city. Um, they're all different data sources. Um, and um, this is to illustrate that your choice of methodology, your choice of data will have an impact on your emissions. And there is no right answer for your emissions. And that doesn't really matter. The key thing is you get a good enough answer, a right a figure in the right ballpark that you can then use to identify actions and track actions. Uh, it's a, it, the input of inventory is not to have perfect data, it's to have enough data to make the right decisions and to track progress in reducing your emissions. So what we can see here uh, is the that the three different methodologies, the Cirrus calculators, the national data and the proxy city give different results. Um, and that isn't surprising, but it's important to know that your choice of methodology will impact on your results. Now, luckily for most, they're quite close together. So we have here for a landfill, 400,000, 600,000 and almost 600,000. So, you know, they're in the same ballpark and these two are actually quite close together. Um, so that gives you confidence. Actually, you know, we're talking about the data in the right ballpark. It's not five tons versus 100,000 tons. They're very close together. For biological treatments, the serious calculator and the national data are super close. Um, OK, that's 13.5 to 14.2, very close together. The KL data, again, is then much, is very different. Um, and again, that's something to investigate. Why is the KL data so different to the serious data or the national data? And that's probably because most of the um, uh, composting or AD capacity in Malaysia is probably in, in, in kale or treats kale's waste. So um, that might this might be more bottom up data where they're based it upon actual facilities on the ground. Um, and this is more a national picture. Um, but often the wealthier uh, cities and regions have the more advanced waste treatment. And so it's more than likely that in wealthier cities like a capital city, uh, this would be higher. But again, that's something to investigate and so maybe contact you know, the kale Institute compiler. How did you do that? Why is it higher than national? Etc. So this is a starting point to ask yourself questions and don't dismiss it because it's different, but use this as a point is actually why is it different and who can I speak to to understand what's driving those differences. Then for incineration, we've got um, 1700 versus 2000 versus 2200. Um, so they're super close together. Again, three very different methodologies getting very similar data. Uh, that's encouraging. Um, and then for wastewater, 
with 135,000 for Cirrus, 91,000 for national data and 200 for, for proxy data. Again, close together, but still quite different. Um, so again, something to investigate. Well, actually, what's driving the difference between the proxy city data and the national data? This one seems sort of to be halfway in between. But the good thing here is they're all in the right ballpark. That is encouraging to me as a compiler because I know I'm not totally wrong. Um, the numbers are roughly right. And it's for me to now decide actually what makes most sense for my city, given going back to those principles, what's most relevant, what's most accurate, what's most transparent, what's most complete. Just use this as a starting point uh, to think through uh, what data is right for your city. But definitely where there are big differences like this one, the biological treatment, ask questions. Don't just ignore it. Say actually that's wrong. It's too different. Ask some questions. Um, so I would always recommend, if you can, to use multiple methodologies to calculate your emissions. Um, A, just to compare, to give yourself the confidence you're in the right ballpark, but also B, um, if you aren't, then to, to start asking some questions and try to understand your data a bit more. Um, but it's always good practice to validate your data, uh, certainly with some, some national scale data to just say, am I getting in the right ballpark? Is, does this roughly feel right? If you haven't completed this exercise, I would recommend you do because this is really insightful. Just to understand the differences between different methodologies and the impact that has on your uh, emissions data. Now, in reality, if we look at these these data points, we've got half a million tons from landfill. We have 200,000 tons from wastewater. Uh, we have 1,000 tons from biological treatments. It's not a big source. OK, so don't break your back trying to find the right answer here, whether you report 13, 14 or 1,000, it's not going to make a difference to your emissions. Your emissions are going to be in the millions of tons of carbon dioxide, not in the 1,000. So this will barely make a dent in your inventory. So um, because it's so small, don't worry about it. Um, don't worry about getting the perfect data. It's insignificant. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny proportion of your inventory. You know, the key thing is focus on getting this right and getting this one right, because that will have a much bigger impact on your emissions than biological, which is only a thousand tons of CO2. OK, so also look at the total volume of emissions and adjust your effort um, on the emissions. It's much better you focus on this one because the differences here are, you know, 50,000 tons, 100,000 tons. And here we're talking about uh, a thousand tons difference, even though it looks bigger. The actual difference uh, is much, much smaller. OK, so then going down to the bottom again, table three, how do we populate this? And again, for waste, there is that interesting um, difference between the other sectors and that we're looking at uh, two scope one sources. So all of these come under basic. Um, and we're looking at waste that's generated in the city and disposed in the city. That's the first one. That's these scope one sources. We're looking at waste generated in the city but disposed outside. There are these scope three sources. And finally, any waste generated from outside, but treated inside, um, is comes under here. Um, so I'm just going to put a no there as well. OK, so three different types of waste. Generated in my city and treated in my city. Generated in my city, but treated outside. Or, treated, or generated outside, but treated inside. Um, if it's inside, it's always scope one. If it's treated outside, it's always scope three. So I've assumed, again, this is my assumption, that all waste generated is treated outside the city. Cities are often very compact, dense urban places. Most waste is treated outside because there's more space there. Waste smells, people don't like to live, people don't like to live next to, 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 to waste sites. So my assumption here is it's treated outside. That is for you to decide for your city. And again, speak to your planners. Um, they'll know exactly where these, these, these students um, uh, facilities are and then speak to them and understand uh, you know where is that waste coming and going to so i've assumed um my city doesn't have any waste facilities in boundary so all of this is not occurring i know and i've assumed all the waste I've, I've i've calculated is treated outside my city boundaries so they come under scope three so i just copy those data points across in this case i've used the serious calculators as my waste so as, as my data source I could have used any of these three. I, I could have used Cirrus, National Data, Proxy City. I've used Cirrus just for the sake of it. But again, that's your decision to decide which data you want to use. So I copy these data points across into here. 
um, I total them, which is the sum across here. In this, this case, it's just the scope three emissions. Um, I add uh, my methodology, serious waste calculators, which is my methodology, because that's very, it's transparent. Anyone can access those calculators. And I've said all waste assumed to be treated um, outside city boundary. Um, and that's my assumption. Um, and uh, again, the key thing here is transparency. I've also put down uh, the data sources. Um, so for um, the landfill site, we use some data from Global Recycling and MDPI. For biological treatment, we used BIRT3. For incineration, I used MDPI. And for wastewater, remember if we just scroll back up to wastewater, I didn't need a volume of waste, I just needed some assumptions. Um, and these are my expert assumptions. Again, you're the, you're the compiler, you're an expert, um, and uh, it's fine to use yourself as a data source or even your colleagues and just put in staff expertise. Um, you know, there was no, I, I didn't use a book for that. I used the serious calculators. In addition, I used my own expertise, my own knowledge of my city, and I referenced that as staff expertise. So if you can't find something uh, in the literature um, and you want to make an assumption yourself, that's perfectly fine. Um, and just put down staff expertise as your data source. Any questions on the waste sector, on the calculations in waste? OK, if there are no questions, then we'll move on to the last module, which is module F. So just bear with me. OK, so module F, we looked at IPPU and FOLU. Um, and for IPPU, again, as I mentioned, for um, industrial processes, this really depends on the activities taking place in your city. So talk to your planners, talk to your colleagues, identify are there any major uh, industries in my city, uh, any major metal, um, any major chemical, uh, or any major mineral industries uh, in my city? If yes, talk to them, understand the size of the activity. Uh, um, for product use, I would always use a, a consumption approach based on national data and scale that to your city. It is impossible to collect the data otherwise. Um, so I wouldn't worry about uh, trying to collect data bottom up. Um, it's, it's perfectly acceptable to use uh, national data. Again, this is often based on population, so I would use national data. Uh, in birth three to calculate um, product use emissions. So we identified uh, the five um, sort of subsectors under uh, product use, which is 2D, uh, 2E, 2F, 2G, and 2H in there from birth three. I then copy across the emissions data uh, for N2O, HFCs, PFCs, SF6, and NF3. Um, and again, this is already in gigagrams of CO2 equivalent. Um, I then scale them by population. Uh, again, the national data, 31.6 million, the city value. Um, I then get my ratio, 6%. I apply that to the total emissions. I get my data in gigagrams. I multiply it by 1,000 to get a ton to CO2 equivalent, um, and I get to 200,000 tons of um, uh, CO2 equivalent. So that's how you calculate emissions from um, product use. Um, again, 200,000 tons, not huge, but not insignificant either. So it is a fairly sizable uh, proportion of emissions. And this is mo mostly, again, most emissions are coming from, from this row. Again, so we can look at the data mostly from, um, from this row. And this row is, um, is from the electronics industry. Uh, and most emissions are coming from PFCs, um, uh, which has a very, very high um, Global warming potential factor. Um, that's why the emissions are so high. So that's that's product use. Then we go to livestock, and for livestock, I gave you a farm essentially. I said, you know, you suddenly you're a farm owner. You've got a herd of of animals. So you've got some dairy cattle, some other cattle. You've got some swine, chicken, goat, sheep, buffaloes, and horses. Um, and I asked you to estimate emissions from that 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 herd of of animals. Um, you then found the emission factors in birth three. Uh, for both enteric fermentation and manure management um, in kilograms of methane per head per year. Uh, we then multiplied that by the activity. And the activity in this case is the number of animals. So we multiplied the, the heads 
the number of animals by the emission factor to get uh, total emissions in kilograms of methane per year. Uh, and we then converted that uh, to tons of CO2 equivalent by dividing by 1,000 to get from kilograms to tons, and then multiplying by 25, um, which is the global potential factor for methane in AR4, to get total methane emissions in CO2 equivalent for both internal fermentation and manure management. And I then added both up together to get total emissions, and the total is 27,000 tons of CO2 equivalent. OK, so fairly small emissions, uh, but it's a fairly small stock of animals. And again, in cities, livestock isn't a huge emission source um, unless you have a huge city and lots of farms and farm animals. But in most cities, uh, even if you have a few animals, this is likely to be, to be very marginal and therefore often not really worth your time to estimate. OK, we didn't estimate emissions from land use change and aggregate sources. Um, again, that's much more local. Um, and again, cities tend to be urban areas. Um, emissions from foliar tend to be very, very small if, if, uh, if, 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 they, if they happen at all. So we then um, went into table three to populate the data. Um, and again, because IPPU and FOLA are both basic plus sources, I can use NE. And so I've put in, I've not estimated emissions from industrial processes because I don't need to. I may do in the future, but for now I don't need to, and therefore I put any. Until I've identified the industries, um, I can use any. For product use, I simply copy the results from my calculation, uh, 200,000 tonnes. For livestock, I do the same. And for emissions from land and aggregate sources, um, I put in NE. Um, so next, I then um, define a methodology for um, product use. I skilled national data using population, and that came from birth three. Uh, for livestock, um, I used the number of head times the emission factor, and I've made up a, a reference here. Say, for example, my my numbers for head came from um, some 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 academic study, but I've, I've made that up. I'm not even sure if that exists. Uh, but you would just reference the source that gave you those numbers uh, of, of 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 animals. Um, and that's how you sort of complete table three for a photo and IPPU. Any questions on uh, module F? OK, so then finally, we put it all together into table three. So you've seen the subsections in each of those modules. Uh, if we then go to table three um, and I then copy the data across, uh, this is what you would see. So you'd see data for these sectors, Notation keys for all the other sectors uh, and the total emissions here uh, for stationary, for transportation, uh, for waste with the methodologies and data sources, and also for um, IPPU and a FOLU. Um, and then um, I've then also sort of summarized the data here, uh, which is your summary inventory um, emissions for uh, stationary, transportation. Uh, and the basic plus sources. Uh, and in this case, my total emissions uh, for my this, this inventory in this case come to 3.3 uh, 3 million. Um, no, this is sorry, sorry 33 million um, based upon these these numbers. So this is what in it, this is what your uh, table three should look like, um, where you collate all your data in one table. Um, it's either got it's got to have either emissions data or a notation key plus your methodology and your data source is your summary table for your GPC inventory. And once you've completed this, um, then you've completed your first inventory, uh, essentially. Um, and we're going to be doing the same in Cirrus next. Um, and Cirrus will automate this table for you. Um, so you don't need to worry about this yourself. It automates it for you. But it's important for you to know how this table is compiled and where it comes from. So let me pause there and see if there are any, any questions on the exercises or on table three.
OK, so if there are no questions, then um, I've given the feedback. Yeah, I think I've given feedback to Deep on the homework submitted to me so far. So uh, again, overall, very good. Um, some some small mistakes again, which hopefully I've, I've run through and you understand how to how to fix those mistakes. So please fix those mistakes and then complete that workbook um, again. So you have it as a reference, uh, but also um, you know, as you've you've gone through those exercises and you're confident that you, you can complete those yourself. Um, OK, so we're going to go to break soon. Before we do that, I just want to quickly um, just run through Cirrus. Um, and I'd like you to open up Cirrus uh, during. Um, during the break. Um, so let's go through this. So. So Cirrus. So Cirrus is uh, an Excel based reporting template and calculator for a GPC and CRF compliant inventory. It's available via CDP um, and on the C40 Resource Center. You also have it uh, uh, shared with you. Um, and the reason we like Cirrus is because it's, it's accessible, it's easy to use, it's very flexible, it's very transparent, and you can combine reporting and analytics in one, uh, one file. Um, there are two versions of Cirrus, and I just want to kind of explain the difference to you. Um, there is an, a, a standard version and a light version. And depending on your um, on your uh, Excel, your version of Excel on your laptop, you may want to choose one over the other. Um, let me just show you quickly the standard version, um, and then you can choose which one you want to upload uh, and and work from um, for the rest of today. So this is the uh, standard version, um, which includes macros. So do enable those macros when you open it. But the key thing with the standard version is uh, is this functionality. Um, so it has this here. Can everyone see this? It has an add box to your left. It doesn't include any any rows when you start with it. It simply includes an add box to the left of each table. You then select the number of rows you need. So in this case, I think I'm going to need 10 rows. I select 10 rows and those 10 rows appear. If I then need 20 rows, I then select 20 rows and those 20 rows will appear as well. So it does that for all your all the tables that you need. So I'm going to scroll just well, well I'll explain exactly what, what all these different tabs are, but it includes this drop down function for every single table. Um, this one's taking a little bit longer. Um, and so you don't see the number of rows at the start with, but you, you can add the rows you need. This allows you to keep the sheet fairly small and tight, and you only see what you need to see. Um, but it does require you to enable macros and to have a more advanced version of Excel. Uh, so this is the standard version, which needs macros, but it's more compact because all it does say, I just need one row from 1.1.1, um, and I need one row for 1.1.2. And I don't need anything for 1.1.3 because I'm not going to estimate that one. It's a very tight table. You can see it within within the same the, the, the same screen. No scrolling up or scrolling down. It's very compact. That may be an advantage, but this is the advanced. This is the standard version. Now for the light version, which I'll show you next. Just one second. Here we go. Serious light. Uh, the functionality is the same. So um, the tool works as as well. Uh, whether you're using the light or the. Um, let me just bring this across to my main screen. We're using light or standard. The functionality is the same, but you can see here in the in the light version. If I go to these tables, um, all the rows are already selected. So I've got lots of rows to choose from. That's not the problem, um, but it's it's I see all the rows and I see more than I need. And particularly when I come to the inventory tabs, um, you can see them. They've all been selected here. I think by default, 20 rows. Everyone gets 20 rows. Um, and so if I don't use them, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have any impact on the calculation, um, but it's not quite as compact as the other one. Um, but it has all the rows, all the functionality. The only thing it's missing uh, is the ability to condense and collapse the table. So I only see the rows that I need to see and that I plan to use. That's the only difference. Um, but based upon your, um, your, your own preference, but also um, the version of Excel you're using and whether you're uh, you can get those macros working, you may want to choose the light version um, over the standard version. 
Okay, that's it. I'm going to take it. We're going to take a break now um, before we then dive into Cirrus. Um, so the plan for Cirrus is for me to give a, a demo for the next hour. Um, and then afterwards, there'll be an exercise for you to complete, which I'll do through on the screen with you. So um, I want you to copy me as we go through the exercise in, in compiling data in Cirrus. Um, but that let me just pause here for any questions on anything I've said so far on the, the workbook exercise as well. OK, so if there are no further questions, then I suggest um, we take a 10 minute break. Um, and so deep behind over to you and uh, to set the uh, get the break started and we'll reconvene in 10 minutes. OK, welcome back, everyone. And uh, looks like everyone's most of you or all of you so far are using the standard version. So I'll use that version as well. So that's great. So um, Cirrus, um, so we're going to cover a few bits, a quick overview. Um, then I'll give a demonstration on how to use Cirrus. Um, and then we'll use Cirrus together. There's part A, which is um, me uh, showing things on screen, and part B, which is for you to do yourself and to finish uh, at home. I would work, uh, but at, but sort of after after today's session. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, it's an Excel-based reporting tool and calculator, uh, fully compliant with the GPC and the CRF, um, and been designed to be very easy to use and uh, flexible. Uh, Internet Cirrus stands for, uh, I'm not sure we have it here, uh, it stands for uh, City Inventory Reporting and Information System, um, which basically means it's it's a reporting tool, but also it's a way for you to collect and compile the data um, for your own inventory. So it's, it, uh, it does both. It's a tool that allows you to report your emissions, but also to collate and compile your emissions. Um, so um, in terms of support, there is a user guide uh, on Cirrus. Uh, available on the C40 Resource Center, uh, link at the bottom. There are also Cirrus video tutorials available on the C40 Resource Center, which take you step by step through the Cirrus uh, tool. So again, if you ever get stuck, uh, if you're ever confused or want to revisit something, um, please go back to those videos uh, because they take you in a very step by step way uh, into what Cirrus is and how it works. Um, so I would definitely recommend you listen to the two first videos. Um, I can't show them uh, today, um, but I definitely recommend you you, you watch those. Um, again, they give you a very good overview um, in terms of what it is uh, and, and, and how it works. So I'll cover the content today, but just as a, a, a recap, uh, very useful to uh, listen to that again. So Cirrus consists essentially of four different features. There's a setup function, the inventory function, the calculator function and the results function. And I'll go through each of these four in turn. The setup function defines your inventory boundary. We discussed this before. Uh, the physical boundary, uh, the population, the GDP, the uh, conversion factors, your gases. It just says, what, what am I measuring within my inventory? It also records all your data sources and your emission factors that you'll be using in your inventory. So under setup, it's the boundary, background information, but also your data sources and all your emission factors. Under the inventory section, this is where you record your activity data, uh, where you use the emission factors you defined in the setup to estimate emissions. Um, and it covers both, it covers station energy, transportation and waste, the basic sectors, and IPPU and Afolu are optional for a basic plus inventory. Then we also include five calculators. Uh, we've worked with four of these. The other one is on fugitive emissions from gas distribution. Again, this is often a very big source in cities in Europe and, and in North America, which have big gas networks, uh, less so for other cities, but there is a calculator there for um, Future losses from gas distribution, as well as those four waste uh, subsectors, uh, landfill, biological treatment, waste incineration, and wastewater. And all calculations are based on IPCC guidance and using default factors. Um, and they should be used if no other data is available. So there, there should be a fallback option uh, 
um, or as a way to validate uh, uh, any other calculations. Then finally, there's the results section, uh, which shows your results and presents your emissions in various ways. Um, it allows for benchmarking of historical emissions, so you can compare, you can add your historical data and compare your emissions over time. Uh, it also allows you to record any emission credits. If you feel your city has emission credits, um, then you can claim that there. It won't count towards your basic results because basic doesn't, GPC doesn't allow for emission credits, but it allows you to report them in a separate way um, and still get some credit for those. Um, and it also includes, as I mentioned before, uh, results presented in both the GPC and the CRF formats. So you get results in both tables uh, from one set of inputs. OK, any questions on the, the setup and design of Cirrus before we uh, deep dive into Cirrus itself? OK, so let's go into Cirrus. I'll first give a demo uh, through my slides and then we'll open Cirrus and uh, become familiar with it through the Excel workbook. So. This is Cirrus, this is your, your, your landing page. You've got a menu at the top, which is the same on every single page. Um, and so we click on the arrow to begin. Um, and that uh, takes us to an introduction uh, with information about Cirrus. But the key, the, the first important tab is the setup tab, which is so the top row uh, is the, 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 the main menu and the bottom is the sub menu. And the setup, you've got a city information sub tab. And this is where we really define the boundary of the city. In this case, the example here is Buenos Aires. We give the city name, the country, the region. We define the inventory year, the geographic boundary, the land area, the population, GDP, um, and any other information that we want to provide. The, um, the cells in black are mandatory, and the cells in blue uh, are optional, and they just give you additional data, but they're not required for GPC reporting. So the first important uh, page is your city information, which defines your inventory boundary. Uh, this, as I mentioned, is the difference between standard and light version. With the standard version, you only select the rows you want to use, um, and the light version giving you 20 rows per subcategory. Again, we're all using, most of us are using standard. I'll be using standard, um, but just if you're using light, just bear in mind, you always have those 20 rows already selected, um, and therefore you need to scroll up and down a bit more than if you're using the standard version where you only see the rows that you have selected. OK, so on the setup, we next move to data source, and this is where we define all our data sources in one place. This creates a drop down function we use elsewhere where we can just select the data source. Uh, but this gives all the information. So we define a data source. Um, we give the name of the source. We give the provider, the year, the period, frequency skill. We just define uh, a lot of parameters that help us identify what the data is, where it comes from, and, and what year it is for. So we've got the name of the source used for the drop down list, and this is a name you can make up yourself. Um, we then go on to the mission factor, um, and here also we define a, a reference. So the first column just says what type of fuel is it, what, what's the activity. The second column allows us to create a unique identifier, which is what we use to select the mission factor. So you can give it quirky names, serious names, it's up to you, uh, as long as it helps you to pick the right emission factor. And we then define the emission factor. Is it in CO2 or uh, is it in, is it, has, it, has it already been converted into CO2 equivalent or is it in original greenhouse gases? What is the assessment report? And again, in this case, uh, you can deviate from what you selected uh, before. In most cases, I, I always encourage you to make sure you always use a consistent um, global warming potential factor as you as a, just one factor across the whole report. Um, and this is kind of where you would define which factor you're using uh, to convert um, tons of methane and nitrous oxide into CO2 equivalent. You then define the units. Uh, that is important because in Cirrus, Cirrus can automatically convert the units for you. So remember before we convert, when we had to convert um, kilotons or equivalent to megawatts um, or to territories, we had to do the conversion ourselves. Cirrus does that for you, but you need to make sure you define those, um, those units yourself before we do that. 
You then add the emission factors in the, in the next few columns and again report them as you see them. So if they're in CO2 equivalent, report them in CO2 equivalent. If they're in uh, greenhouse gases, report them in greenhouse gases. The tool will do the conversion for you if it needs to. Uh, and then you'll see there's a separate column at the end uh, for CO2b, which is the biogenic carbon, uh, and that allows Cirrus to calculate those emissions, but not to add them to your basic total. And further to the right, there's additional data, uh, the boxes on data quality, a uh, year and data source, et cetera. OK, so then we move on to the main tab, which is the inventory tab, where we have the sub tabs for stationary, transportation, waste, IPP, photo and scope through. So these are the, the main GBC uh, sectors. Um, and for each of these, you've got a long sort of row with lots of different um, uh, cells. Uh, and uh, we're going to go through these in turn. So these two, the, the two images here, you've got a top image and a bottom image. They should be seen as one continuous row. So they, in, in reality, they continue across across the screen. So here we have the first thing you do uh, per subsector is you select a fuel type. Uh, it could be gas, electricity, uh, diesel, gasoline. But you select a fuel type uh, for your uh, activity. Um, you then enter the activity data, uh, the amount, the units, and if you need to convert the units, uh, you need to indicate so, and Sirius will convert the units for you into the one you want it you want it converted to. And this is to make sure that the units you're using for your activity data always need to match the units you're using in your emission factor. So this this bit, these these orange the orange columns here, allow you to do that conversion to make sure the units are consistent uh, in multiplying activity data by an emission factor. Uh, you then select your emission factor. This is selected from the drop down list. And again, we defined them before, and now we're selecting them from the drop down list that you've created earlier. And that then automatically populates the emission factors in terms of CO2 equivalent um, in, in, in the table for you. Um, if you don't have an emission factor, you just have emissions data. For example, for the product use for IPPU, we just scaled national emissions data. We didn't use an emissions factor, we didn't use uh, activity data, we just used emissions data. You can choose to then do that as well. That's that's in this in the, the next next bit of the, the row. You then select, you, you, you put a tick under emission emissions data and you directly enter the emissions data into these cells. This overrides any calculation um, and means that you just record your emissions and it totals emissions for you. Um, we would always recommend if you have an emission factor, you do the multiplication of activity data by emission factor. It's more transparent. If you don't have that, you just have emissions data, then you ignore the activity data, ignore the emission factor and simply tick this box and enter your total emissions data. So it's, an it's a way of, of entering data if you don't have uh, any activity data or, a, uh, or, or an emissions factor. Uh, the next the tool does the calculation for you automatically. Um, so there's no need to do the calculation. It does it automatically for you. All the tool really needs is activity data and an emission factor and the rest is automatically done for you. Um, you may need to make sure the units are the same, um, but otherwise everything is automatically done for you. Then you've got to indicate data quality. Um, and again, this is your assessment. This is high, medium, low. Uh, this is your understanding of what the quality is. No one's going to check on, check on you. No one's going to give you a mark. Um, it's just your assessment of the data quality. And then the final two columns are for you to describe the methodology. Uh, and this is again, could be a paragraph as written here. It could be a line, you know, skilled national data based on population is a methodology. Or use a serious calculator, um, you know, using X, Y and Z assumptions. Uh, it's up to you how you define the methodology, but make sure uh, you always write something in there to give the user an understanding of what you did, but also as a good aid memoir for yourself and your colleagues um, to know exactly what you did internally and how you did the calculation. The final bit is on your data source. And again, this is from a drop down box you defined earlier. You simply select the data source um, that you identified. If there are multiple data sources, just write it in manually. Uh, the tool only accepts one data source. Um, but um, 
yeah, again, this is purely for transparency, but you've defined this before. So all you need to do here is select a source from the drop down box. And those are essentially your main steps in um, compiling an emissions inventory and data in Cirrus. You select your fuel type, you enter activity data, convert units if necessary, select your emission factor, um, and indicate your data quality, describe your methodology, and select your data source. So a lot of drop downs. Uh, so it's meant to make it as easy as possible for you uh, with options to override uh, if you don't have emissions, if you don't have in emission factor, you can also override it with direct emissions data. Two other things, if you use a notation key, um, this is quite early on because you, you're indicating you don't have data, either calculated or direct emissions data, and you select a notation key from the drop down list, uh, N, O, I, E, N, E, or C. If it applies to a whole subsector, then enter it in the colored row. So if it applies to the whole subsector, uh, enter it in the colored row that you see uh, just uh, at the top of every subsector. If you have, for example, a subsector, we have data for some activities, but not for all, then can, you can also use a, not a notation key in one of the white rows, um, in which case it doesn't show up in your results uh, because you have some data already, uh, but it does show up uh, in, your, in your bigger reports uh, that you have used a notation key somewhere again for transparency, but only if you enter it in the, the colored row and it applies to the whole sector will it show up in your results table. Um, if not, um, it, it just stays in this in this 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 table. And again, if you do use a notation key, then rather than providing a methodology, you want to provide a description and explanation for using an, a notation key. For example, this activity doesn't occur in my city, uh, basic plus source, therefore not estimated. Just gives, give a brief reason uh, why you're using a notation key, uh, again, for transparency's sake. OK, then this is the summary table that you'll get. Uh, again, Cirrus does everything for you. All you've got to do is input the data. It does all the calculations for you. It creates a summary table for you. And this is the summary table you'll see in Cirrus, where you have all your emissions um, by, by sector and by scope. Uh, green for basic, blue for basic plus, and red for additional territorial. So for basic, uh, you can see writing these two together, scope one and scope two to get the basic, only for uh, stationary transportation and waste. For basic plus, we're also adding IPPU and FOLU. And for basic plus scope three, we're also adding scope three, but we haven't uh, entered emissions data in there. Then for territorial, you see we're adding all the emissions going along the scope one column from top to bottom, which also includes those, those purple um, or, or pink cells, which uh, we don't add in the basic, but we do add in, in the territorial total. And this includes any in-boundary power generation or any in-boundary treatment of waste generated from outside the city, because it's, again, it's generated outside your city, and therefore it's not driven by your city, therefore it's not basic. But it is disposed in your city, therefore it counts under scope one. But that is a separate total to your basic total. So hopefully this table also gives you an indication of how those uh, totals are calculated and arrived at. Basic just includes scope one and scope two uh, uh, for stationary and station and transportation, scope one and scope three for waste. And then basic plus is additionally um, IPPU and FOLU. And the territorial total is separate to basic and basic plus and includes those pink cells as well. And this is the biggest summary table. And on the left, you'll recognize that table that we also had uh, in the workbook, in table three in the workbook. It gives you the full breakdown of emissions by subsector and by scope, indicating notation keys, indicating emissions. Um, so that's the, really the summary table. There's also then the summary graph that you get in Cirrus, where it shows you the pie charts for basic, basic plus, and basic plus scope three, and then um, a, uh, a bar chart uh, showing emissions by scope for all of the subsectors in the GPC, and finally a chart showing emissions by scope um, based on um, basic and basic plus. Okay, so again, you've got the data input, but you also have quite a bit of analysis uh, shared with you uh, in, in Cirrus. <laughs>
Then there's also the CRF table, which is this table, which again, automatically populated, um, which gives you the data uh, for, um, for the CRF categories. It's a different table, but it's the same data uh, just presented differently um, and uh, to be used for CRF reporting. Then if you did want to report net emissions, for example, if your city buys offsets or it buys carbon credits, or it, your city buys green energy at a tariff, you can report those emissions here. Um, there's different tables here to report those additional credits, either as a market-based method, as a credit transaction, uh, something you buy or something you sell. You document that here. Um, and there's a separate summary table below, uh, which gives you those results, including the net emissions. Again, that's different to your GPC reporting because GPC doesn't allow net emissions, but it allows you to see your own results table um, taking those net emissions into account. And that's more for your own reporting within your own city uh, context. OK, so that's Sarah. So let's go get ready for the demo. Um, so let me stop sharing this screen and I'll go back to sharing um, my. Um, my Sarah's file. There you go. Let me bring that across. So I'm looking at you. Um, before we continue, any any questions at all, or anyone had any issues opening up the Cirrus file? No, it looks like everyone's clear. Okay, so this when you open Cirrus, you get to this this page. Um, here you've got the version, so standard or light. Um, the version number and the data was released. There are frequent updates um, based on uh, additional uh, features, based upon additional reporting requirements. So every now and then just check in that you're using the latest version um, uh, by downloading uh, a version from, from the resource center, the Super resource center. Um, here you'll see built on greenhouse gas protocol. This is uh, means it's been reviewed by the greenhouse gas protocol by WRI for compliance and conformance with the GPC. So we then click on this arrow to begin, and this takes us into Cirrus, and this is the introduction uh, section. Again, at the top we have the, the, the main menu and the sub menu. This gives you a user guide, which just basically takes us through those different features of the, the tool, uh, the setup, the inventory, the calculators, the results, and there's a section on notes. There's also um, a section on who to contact, uh, depending on the kind of city you are. If you're a member of C40, you can contact measurement at C40. If you're an ICLI city, your regional ICLI office. Uh, if you report to CDP, you can contact CDP with any questions. Or if you report to GCOM or a member of GCOM, you can contact GCOM for any questions on, on Cirrus. Um, then we have a few subheadings under introduction. There's the GPC tab. And again, please follow this with me as we go through this, which gives you a very brief summary of the GPC. Um, so it gives you what's the GPC there for. It gives you the definition of scope one, scope two, scope three. It gives you the requirements for basic and basic plus reporting. Um, so it's just a set of definitions. Um, so it's a very useful aid memoir. As you're going through this, you have a quick reference to the GPC in the tool as well, should you need it. If you want to know exactly, well, actually, what, what does... Um, uh, Commercial buildings mean again, uh, here's a quick definition. So it's quite useful to have a definition of some of those terms to hand and the table setting out the basic and basic plus requirements. So you know exactly what am I supposed to be reporting under basic and basic plus. There's also a, a tab on notation keys. Uh, and again, they tell you how to use notation keys. You've got the, the tree here, how to make decisions. You've got definitions and examples of how to use Notation keys, so you can copy these if you need to. If you're if you're not sure how to define or how to give uh, an explanation, then you know have a look here and maybe copy and and uh, update the text you have here. So that's notation keys. Then uh, GWP values. Again, they're built into Cirrus, so you won't need them, uh, but you have a reference here for those values if you wanted to. And again, seeing the differences between the reports uh, and the impact they have on your total emissions. And then finally, conversion factors. Again, these are built into Cirrus as well, but useful as a reference point. You have the conversion factors 
between tera, giga, mega, and kilo. Uh, conversion factors for mass, so grams, kilograms, tons, kilotons, a long ton, short ton, a pound. Um, conversion factors for volume, liters, cubic meters, barrels, gallons. Conversion factors for distance, miles, kilometers, meters, inches, centimeters. Um, conversion factors for energy. Uh, fuel volume conversion factors. Um, so you have lots of conversion factors here that you may want to use. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, most of these are built into Cirrus. So uh, you probably won't be needing them anyway, but they're there as a reference source. So that completes the introduction, which is basically a reference for you. We then move on to setup. And under setup, we have a number of tables. We have the first table, which defines your city, name, country, region, etc. cetera. Uh, then this is for you to um, copy or insert um, a map of your city boundary, which is useful for other people to get a visual uh, you know, look at your city or just include a link to uh, a website that has your city boundary. And then this is where we define the inventory information. So we define our reporting level. Are we reporting just, um, basic or basic plus? You know, very important. Is it basic or basic plus? Which gases am I including? Uh, you can choose your gases. Most cases, if you're going for basic, you want to include carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Let me just select basic here. Uh, you don't want to select your global warming potential factor. Again, uh, use your national use the same as your national reporting or use the latest ones, either fourth or fifth. I'm assuming for fourth for now. Um, if you weren't using AR4 or AR5, you've got to give a reason for not doing so. Because others you're using quite out of date uh, conversion factors or global warming potential factors. So you've got to give a reason. If not AR4 or 5, give a reason. Then give a brief description of your overall methodology and tools used. You know, we've used serious calculators, we've used national data, just a very brief summary of your main methodologies and your main approaches to uh, calculating emissions. Are there any relevant local, regional, national regulations to do with compiling your inventory that may explain why you've done one or two things? So do you have a a, a, a bylaw or a requirement to report emissions every one, two, three or four years, for example. Does it need to be aligned with national reporting? Uh, and again, go back, going back to the question, have you decided, you know, as a group of Malaysian cities uh, to uh, apply some similar standards uh, and data sources? The rest are all, the blue ones are all optional. Um, so comments, if you've had a previous inventory, to comment on whether, you, whether there are any changes. If you've had your inventory audited or verified by a third party, you know that adds additional information and, and trust in your inventory. You can add that if you wanted to, uh, and any plan improvements. That's in blue, so that means it's optional. Likewise, if you want to add your own details um, and contact details to this, um, that's recommended, but it's not required for GPC reporting. So that's a setup uh, for city information. Then we go to data sources. Um, and let me just reduce this to say just five data sources. Uh, this is where you define what's the data source. This is, for example, um, fuel sold in Malaysia. You just type it in there. The name of um, the, the data source. Uh, this is, um, for example, uh, National Energy Balance Report 2017. And this is this is the uh, Ministry of Energy. Again, I'm making this up. So again, you're just defining your, your data source here. I then move on to uh, the next column, which is when was the data published? This was published in 2017, so I had 2017. Uh, what was the period? It's a, it's a full calendar year. Frequency, it's updated every year, annually. Scale, it's national data. And the website is, for example, again, I'm making this up, NEB 2017. OK, so now I've defined a data source. That's all you need to do. Uh, it's very simple, but always try and find a link. It just gives a bit more detail about the data you're using. And then for the next one, I can, for example, use uh, emission factor, blah, blah, blah. OK, so that's defining your data source. You should define all your data sources at the start because you'll be using them in other tabs. Then we move on to emission factors. And again, I'm going to add, say, five emission factors. So I'll select five from the drop down box. Uh, I then select the fuel, 
in this case, I'm going to do an emission factor for uh, what should we choose? We're going to choose um, natural gas. I then this is my own unique identifier. I can, for example, I can do EF and G. Um, as long as I recognize that, I can do EF um, nat gas. I can do natural gas EF. Again, this is for you to decide. Use your own system, but it's your it's your name. I can even do um, uh, say just make, make make something up like like Donald Duck. You can do that. It's not very useful because um, it might you might not, not know exactly what that means. But it's up to you really to decide uh, what name you give it. You then select the type. So again, is the emission factor already converted into CO two equivalent, or is it in the original greenhouse gas? Um, I'm going to go for original greenhouse gas. I then select the uh, GDP factor. I've gone for four AR. I then define the units. In this case, it's uh, kilograms per per terajoule. Then the tool will automatically convert this uh, into tons and into CO two equivalents. I then add my values here. Um, again, I'm going to making this up. Uh, say 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0.1. And that that defines my emission factor. I then just give it, and then so there's other columns for CO two B. If you just have one emission factor, for example, if you don't have CO two methane and nitrous oxide separately, but just already converted to CO two equivalent, you would add it in here. But only complete this column if the others are completely blank. Okay, so don't have this one and these ones because then you're double counting. Just have either just have CO two and methane and nitrous oxide or just CO2E for all of them combined. Um, CO2B biogenic carbon is always separate, so make sure you don't include that under CO2. You report that here under uh, CO2B. We then indicate data quality uh, for the emission factor. I'm going to say this is fairly high. Uh, the year, uh, if you know the year, I'm going to go for 2017. The scale, it's a national emission factor. Um, but if it was IPCC, you would use international, for example, but I'm going to go for national. Description is optional, but EF for for natural gas in Malaysia. Uh, and then at the end, you select your emission source, and then this list then provides all the emission data sources you've already entered. In this case, I've only entered once. I'm going to select uh, this one and now I've defined an emission factor. So I have an emission factor and I've got my data sources defined. Um, if you wanted to define IPPU emission factors, you would do those here because there are different gases. So we have all the different F gases. There are tons and tons of them. I would stay away from this. This just makes it more complicated, but it's there if you wanted to. Um, but for now, I would just ignore that because it gets very messy and very complicated. And it's a basic plus source as well. So next we move on to the infantry component, the different sectors. And there's uh, some instructions here again on how to use uh, the, the different tables. Um, and then you've got the uh, different subsectors, the different sectors here. I'm going to start with stationary. And I get to this table. Uh, so we have uh, the different subsectors here. So 1.1 residential buildings, 1.2 commercial, 1.3 manufacturing, 1.4 energy industries. You have all the subsectors in the GPC we have listed here, along with their scopes. So we have scope one, scope two, scope three. For energy industries, we have scope one, scope two, scope three, but also the additional scope one for any in-boundary power generation. So that's in pink because it doesn't get added to the total basic or basic plus emissions. But if you do have any energy station, energy power stations in your city, you report them under 1.4.4. And likewise, for a few submissions, they're just scope one, so you only have the scope one emission source. Now, Cirrus will apply default notation keys for sectors that aren't very common. So for basic plus sectors, you can see it's already used NE for notation key for the basic, basic plus sources and NO for the less common basic sources. So that's just to make it easier for you. Um, you can override them, you can delete them, you can change them, but as default, uh, it's it's already used any for basic plus sources and also NO for not very common basic sources. 
So then to enter data, uh, you know, we select activity, uh, which is the fuel type. Again, so I'm going to go for natural gas. Uh, I'm then going to have a notation key. I won't use that because we're entering data. Um, I put in, say, 5,000 units. And again, this is all made up. I'm going to do megawatt hours. Um, I'm going to select my select the gases. Uh, in this case, it's methane, nitrous oxide, and CO2. I'm going to select my emission factor, which is EF for natural gas that I defined earlier. And then this is where you've got to pay attention. So I'm giving units in megawatt hours, but then the emission factor is in terajoules. So I have to convert megawatt hours into terajoules. So I do that by simply defining here the unit for the emission factor, which is in terajoules. OK, so terajoules and terajoules. And then uh, Cirrus automatically finds the conversion factor from, meg from, it, from megawatt hours to terajoules and will apply that. It then copies across the emission factors, already converted into C2 equivalent for you. Um, and it then gives you uh, your emissions total. In this case, the emissions aren't very high, but it gives you your, your emissions total um, already kind of reported in there. Um, so yeah, in this case, once you converted them, they weren't very high for CO2, they're much higher for N2O. Um, let me just, actually, let me just fix that quickly because that doesn't make sense. So we, then we, we can just go back to emission factors. Um, and if I do this, say I put this one at 50. Uh, and then I come back. So you can always go back between between these sectors. Everything is saved uh, and it's kept the way you are. So in this case, I updated the emission factor and I can see uh, emissions are still aren't very high. So let's just make that emission factor a bit higher. Um, it's actually, yeah do this no, actually let's I'm sorry uh, let's increase the quantity of fuel consumed and just bear with me as there we go I'm going to change this to 1 million megawatt hours and you can see the emissions have changed uh, quite a bit so now I've got almost 300 tons of CO2 equivalent. Uh, then the final bit is for me to select a data quality indicator, uh, say low, a description methodology, and again a data source from the drop down list, um, which I pick here. Um, and then there's an optional box here around the data quality explanation where you can choose to define why you rated it the way you did. So in this case, I rated it um, as, sorry, let me just go back to the right. I rated this as low, so I would they I can just add here uh, low rating due to um, X, Y, and Z. Again, for you to decide. Um, and so once you've done that, you do that for all your other sectors. Uh, you simply define your activity uh, by selecting from a drop-down list. The the first two columns are usually mandatory. The second one, the third one, is usually a description, and that's optional. You then simply enter the data um, and the, the units, select your gases and the emission factor, then just double check the units. These units should be the same as these units. So the um, if they're different, um, so these units on megawatt hours should be the same as these units in this cell. If they're different, then simply copy the emission factor denominator, the terajoules, into this box, and then Cirrus does the conversion for you. Um, so next we would do 1.1.2 and so on. If I needed an extra row, I would select an extra row here, say two, uh, and uh, the second row would, would would appear, and then I can select another gas um, or an, another fuel. So I might use uh, propane this time, um, and that's how you complete it. If you're using a notation key, I would again always use them in the in the coloured column. So here, for example, and that applies to the whole subsector the whole scope and, and the subsector. If, for example, um, I know there's natural gas being used, I know there's propane being used, but I don't, I can't report that data because it's confidential, I would simply put confidential uh, in one of the right rows. Um, it doesn't affect this from being reported, but it just makes you be a bit more transparent around uh, what is happening uh, that isn't re being, being reported. So do the same for all these sectors, same for transportation, same for waste, same for IPPU and the folio if you want to do basic plus sources as well. 
Uh, we then go to results. And you've got different ways of viewing your results. You've got the summary table, uh, which is this table. Uh, and we select a reporting table here and it shows you your emissions uh, per scope and per sector. It's a very high level table, but you've got a nice table here with, with a graph. And if you define your GDP, your population and your land area, it gives you per capita, uh, per unit area and per unit GDP emission intensity factors. So that's quite useful as well, but this is just a high level summary. The next one is more interesting, which are the graphs. And in this case, you've got a number of graphs, uh, again, showing the difference between basic, basic plus, basic plus scope three. If you're only reporting basic, these will all be all three be the same. Then a stacked bar chart showing emissions uh, by subsector and by scope. Uh, you have a waterfall chart uh, showing emissions um, as a proportion of total emissions. Uh, and you have a chart showing emissions by scope. So different ways of viewing your data once you have a complete inventory. The overview tab shows you all your results in that table three that we went through before. Um, again, with all, with all notation keys included and emissions data. Uh, so very useful as well. Um, and then you have the analysis, which allows you to add in historical data. Um, and then you, you can compare data over time uh, overall and by sector. And you can uh, you can choose different views, uh, etc. So this allows you to do some analysis, uh, but you'll need multiple years of your data to do this analysis. Uh, net emissions is where you can report additional net emissions. If you do buy or sell emission credits and you want them, you want them reflected in your inventory, you can do that here. So you add them here at the top and then at the bottom you have the same GPC table. But in this case, it includes a column for reductions and then reflects those reductions in your emissions. But bearing in mind, um, these won't be reported as GPC. They're simply reported for you uh, for your own internal purposes as net emissions. And then finally, you've got the GCOM CRF, uh, which uh, allows you to add additional data uh, on if you have an emissions trading system, if you have any um, facilities owned um, by the city, but outside the city boundary. Again, remember during session one, we went through these differences. Um, and if you have any distributed uh, renewable energy generation in your city, um, you should report those as well. They don't get counted, but it's useful to, to document them. And we then have the uh, summary table in the CRF uh, automatically populated for you, um, which can be shared with the uh, with uh, with CDP for your GCOM reporting. So these are optional. If they are relevant to your city boundary, you should you should include these. And again, using the same drop down function we had before. Um, otherwise, uh, ignore this, but it will be populated the same way uh, it, it, it's done for your G, uh, GPC reporting. And the final uh, tab is notes. Um, and here you've got basically six sheets that haven't been populated and they're there for you to use. So if you want to do a calculation, um, for example, 55 times 69 divided by 1000, you can do your calculations here. Uh, you can copy data, raw data here as well, for example, uh, to be used elsewhere in your inventory. So this is just a way for you to include any notes, any assumptions, any additional calculations, um, any thoughts uh, to have them in your inventory uh, in the same place where you report your data. Um, and it's it's up to you how you populate these. This is just sort of spare, spare sheets for you to use um, and where it's not structured and you can just use the, the, the space yourself to uh, sort of write your data and, and store any additional information here uh, or any any pre-calculations before you put them into Cirrus, you can you can save them here. OK, so that's our introduction uh, through Cirrus. Any questions? No, you're still following. Uh, that's great. OK, so I'm going to share, stop my, share my screen. I'm going to go back to my um, presentation. There we go. OK, so now it's time to move into the practical parts um, and I'll introduce the exercise first. Then we'll have a break um, and then we'll do the exercise after the break. And again, for this part, I will do this with you.
um, um, but then afterwards uh, you'll have your homework uh, to do yourself. So the first thing to do is to define your inventory boundary. So we'll go back to uh, the setup and we'll define the inventory boundary for your city. Um, I'll then give you some data sources and emission factors and we'll define those. We'll then update the station energy tab with data from table A, which I'll give you as well, and use notation keys for all other activities. We'll do the same for transportation and waste. Uh, we'll then complete the data quality assessment um, and then we'll review the results and that should um, give you a complete inventory in Cirrus. OK. So the first thing I'd like you to do uh, just before we, we break is the <clears throat> is the city information. So um, let me just stop showing stop showing this screen and we'll go back to Cirrus. Um, and I would like you to open Cirrus and define the boundary with me um, as we um, go through this. OK, so we're going to go to setup. So everyone can go to setup and to city information, which is the first uh, sort of a tab on the submenu, and I want you to define the boundary uh, right now as I'm doing it. So name of city, I'm making this up, but in your case, uh, please use your own city name. OK, so. Uh, I'm going to call my city Greenpoint. Uh, we're in Malaysia. The region is um, Southeast Asia. My inventory year, I'm going to use 2017. Um, so please use 2017. My geographic boundary, um, is it a sovereign city state, a federal district, a province district state, a county, metropolitan area, a city, a local authority, uh, a local government area within a city or other? I'm going to go for a city. Again, for you to decide what you want to do. How big is my city? I'm going to say it's around um, 900 square kilometers. What's my population? I'm going to assume it's around, uh, say, 4 million. Again, but for, for yourselves, please please enter your own data. What's the GDP? This is too difficult to guess. I'm just going to go, I'm going to make something up. Um, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for uh, 200 billion. Um, so again, just may make this up or just enter your own data or make it up. Um, then we can, again, the, the blue ones are optional. So for type of economy, I'm going to say we're mostly a services led economy. Uh, most cities tend to be. My climate is, uh, what is it? It's sort of tropical, tropical monsoon I'm going to go for. Um, and that's my city information. Okay, so please make sure you've got this populated uh, for your city. I'm then going to scroll down. I'll add a map later on. I don't need to do that now. Um, then we go to inventory information. Again, I'm going to select basic as my inventory boundary. Um, I'm going to select CO2, CH4 and nitrous oxide uh, for my gases. I'm going to select 4AR for my assessment reports. Uh, this is not applicable because I've already used 4AR. Overall methodology um, is um, using So my just crash for a second. Uh, so I'm going to using or scaling scaling national data. It's currently my main methodology. Uh, this is not applicable. Um, this is my first inventory. So this is not applicable either. Um, and then I'm going to put my details here as well. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Okay. So if you can please make sure you have that completed before we start. Um, I'm going to ask Deep now to give us a 10 minute break and after the break we'll enter the data sources, the emission factors um, and the activity data to calculate and create our first inventory. So Deep, I'll pause here and uh, ask you to uh, uh, yeah, open a break maybe until until 22. OK, welcome back everyone. Um, we'll make a start and uh, yeah, hopefully you're ready to um, complete your first inventory in Cirrus. Um, so You've just defined your boundary uh, and next we're going to define our data sources and our emission factors. Now for this, this 
inventory, we're using four main data sources, BER3, the CDM reports, the NEB reports, and the Cirrus calculators. So what I'd like you to do is, in, is have your Cirrus file open um, and is to navigate to the data sources tab, which is under setup, which is next to city information. So if everyone can open the data sources tab, and we're going to use these four different data sources. Uh, the Cirrus calculators you don't need to define because it's in Cirrus. So for the other three, um, if you can please uh, go to the sources. If you've got the standard version, select three uh, rows to add. You can add more if you want to do. We're only going to be populating three for now. So add three rows. Um, and then what I'd like you to do is to define each of these data sources as follows. You've got the information here also in your handout. So if you can please um, copy this data across. Um, so for the first one, uh, the data is birth three. I'll just put in birth three in the first column. Then Malaysia third brand or update report to the UNFCCC in the name of source column. Then Ministry of Environment and Water in the provider column. And then the year is 2016. It's a calendar year every two years national skill and you've got the link there as well so if you can all please uh, copy this across into your um Cirrus file i'll keep this slide on open for a second and i'm going to do the same uh, as as you do that so under data uh just put in birth three uh then uh, malaysia third by annual update report to unf Triple C, uh, Ministry of Environment and Water. Uh, 2016, calendar year, uh, every two years. So again, from the drop down box, pick every two years, uh, national scale, um, and you don't need to put in the full uh, link, just put in a shorter link, okay? So that's the first report. Um, so I'll give you another second to complete that. OK, and then next up, we're going to go to the National Energy Balance Report. So if you can all please copy this across as well, and I'll do that with you. So the data type is NEB 2017. Uh, the na name of the source is the National Energy Balance 2017. The provider is MEIH, which is the Malaysia Energy Information Hub managed by the Energy Commission of Malaysia. Uh, the year is 2017. The period is every year. So from the drop down box, select. Uh, uh, so we've got 2017 calendar year. This period uh, frequency is every year. It's reported on an annual basis. The scale is for the whole of Malaysia. So it's national. And uh, the link is um, HTTPS. M-E-I-H dot S-T dot gov dot M-Y. So that's the second of our data sources. Um, and I'll give you another few seconds to complete that one. So National Energy Balance Report. Um, OK, and the, finally, we're going to move on to the last one, which is the, uh, sorry, ignore the title. This is the CDM report. So data is uh, CDM 2017. So in the first column, enter CDM 2017. Name of source is the 2017 CDM electricity baseline for Malaysia. Uh, the provider is the Malaysian Green Tech Corporation, the Malaysian Green Technology Corporation. The year is 2017 again. The period is a calendar year. Uh, so it's like calendar year for the drop down list. It's reported every year. So an annual report again. Uh, the scale is national and the website. Again, just for now, you can give a short one, which is www.mgtc.gov.my. OK, so that should then define your three data sources that we're going to be using today. Um, so let me just stop this screen share and show you my um, show you my uh, Cirrus file. Um, okay, and as you can see, I've defined the three data sources.
um, the data types, the name of the source, the provider, uh, the year, the period, frequency, scale, and the link. In reality, the only thing we're using from this further on is the name of the source, because this provides the drop down we use elsewhere. The rest is for transparency and it allows someone else to actually find not just the title of the report, but also the author, the year to which it applies, and the link, etc. So the rest is additional information. The key thing is that we have a drop down which we can use elsewhere in our inventory. OK, I'm going to move on now. Um, shout if you'd like me to pause a bit longer. If um, but otherwise, I'm going to move on to emission factors. OK, so let's move on to emission factors. So we click on the emission factor uh, tab on the sub menu and we get to this uh, sheet. We're going to define six emission factors. So please, if you're using the um, standard version, please select six from this drop down. And you'll see one in my case, one extra row appears. So I'm going to, so again, all you're doing is you're putting in the fuel type here from a drop down. You're giving your own unique identifier here. That could be your own language, um, your own code. Uh, you then define here, is the emission factor already converted into CO2 equivalent or not? If it is, then select CO2E. If it's not, if it includes kilograms or tons of methane and nitrous oxide, then select greenhouse gases. Select your assessment report, either four or five AR enter the units uh, for the emission factor, and then enter the data as you find it. And that's all you need to do. And then at the end, simply select a data quality, the year, the scale, scale is all, and the uh, description, but you can leave the description blank for now and enter your data source. Uh, but the key thing is that we define the values for the emission factor. Okay, so let me stop showing my screen um, and I'll share my slide again. Uh, and you've got the data in here. So these are your emission factors, which we're using from birth three, which are the fossil fuels, and for electricity, we're using CDM 2017. So you've got the emission factor. So we're using uh, six fuels, LPG, natural gas, uh, two values for diesel, diesel stationary and diesel transportation, petrol and gasoline, and electricity. And we've got emission factors for CO2, for methane, and for nitrous oxide. In the case of methane and nitrous oxide, you can see they're still in their original gas, so they're in methane and nitrous oxide. So remember to select greenhouse gas in that column. They haven't yet been converted into CO2 uh, equivalent, um, and then enter the source at the end. So select six fuels, um, and just to find those fuels in the state in the first column, again, they can be multiple. So in the case of diesel, you can have two diesels, but then in your own, in the second column, where you define your unique identifier, you can, you can specify the difference between diesel stationary and diesel transportation. Use a code that makes sense to you. Um, don't make it too complicated, but don't make it too long, uh, as long as it, it's clear to you and, and, and to your colleagues. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes to complete this and I'll, I'll do the same uh, so I can share with you my screen afterwards. And look at the units, and the units are uh, uh, for the fossil fuels, they're in tons per terajoule. So simply add tons per terajoule uh, for the units. <laughs> 
and for electricity, uh, they're in tons per megawatt hour. And again, you can select those from the drop down box. Um, and then simply enter the values that you see on your screen. So we have 63.1 for LPG, then 0 0.01. For methane and 0.01 for nitrous oxide. OK, how's everyone getting on? OK, so let me share my screen with you. You have these in the handouts as well, but let me share my screen with you to show you what I've done in that time. Uh, so here we go. Here's my series file. So again, I selected uh, six. Um, six rows for six emission factors from this uh, drop down. I then define the six gases here. I gave them all a unique identifier shorthand to make it quick. Um, I then define them as in terms of their greenhouse gases. They won't get converted into CO2 equivalent. I'm using 4AR. Um, the units were tons per terajoule and for electricity tons per megawatt hour. And I then just copied in the emission factors here, as you can see. Um, I then went across the table and I added the data quality high because they're from a national source 2017 because reported for actually for a bear it's 2016. Uh, so we use 2016 for those values, sorry, uh, and 2017 for CM factor, uh, the national data and I selected the source from the drop down here. So that's how we define our emission factors. I can add more as we go along. I can then come back here. Actually, I forgot one. I'll add seven. Um, and an additional row will appear for me to add an additional emission factor. So those are the emission factors. So next we're going to go to the inventory. Um, and let me just, so then we're going to click on the menu at the top, the top one called inventory. And then on the bottom left under stationary. So we're now, I'm now in inventory for the main menu and stationary on the sub menu. Uh, and then let me stop showing my screen again. So I'll go back to uh, the slide deck uh, for the the exercise. And again, this is in your handout as well, uh, so you can refer to this if you if you need to. Um, and this is kind of the easy bit now. We've defined the emission factors. We just need to add the activity data, and we're pretty much there. So I've got three tables here with data for um, stationary energy, data for um, transportation, and data for uh, for waste. Um, the emission factors we've already defined. So all we really need to do is we really need to just focus on the activity data and enter that in Cirrus. Just a key thing to notice here. Um, for the fossil fuels, you can see the activity data is in terajoules and the emission factor is in terajoules as well. For electricity, the data is in terajoules, but the emission factor is in megawatt hours. So we need to do a conversion there. So just bear in mind, we we'll need to use the activity data conversion for that. 
So for this one, I'm going to do this live with you on screen. Uh, so please make sure you've got the handout open uh, and the data open. And let me share my uh, Cirrus file with you and we'll do this uh, together on the screen. And um, yeah, if you can follow me uh, as I'm populating the data on the screen, that would be great. OK, so uh, for residential buildings, we have two fuel types. So, um, so basically, I'm just going to. I'm just going to select that we've only have one fuel type for scope one and one fuel type for scope two. So I'm going to select one row for each one row for scope one and one row for scope two. For row one, we're using LPG. Uh, so I'm selecting LPG. I can select it from the drop down list. Where do we have LPG, liquefied petroleum gas? Here's LPG. And for scope two, we're using electricity. So I'm going to select electricity. OK, the amount, I have 3,000 terajoules uh, of LPG. And I have uh, 6,000 terajoules of electricity. OK, so I'm going to select my emission factor. Um, well, first I'll select the gases. Both I want to report for electricity. I'm just reporting CO2. Remember, the emission factor is just for CO2, and for LPG I'm reporting all three gases. And then select my emission factor for LPG. It's EF LPG. For electricity, it's EF elec. Again, these are my codes. I notice the unit for LPG activity is the same as for the activity and the emission factor, so no need to do conversion. But for electricity, as I mentioned, the Data, that is data is in terajoules, uh, 6,000 terajoules, but the emission factor is in megawatt hours. So I need to convert this into megawatt hours. So simply what I do in this column under EF unit, I select megawatt hours because that's the denominator in the uh, emission factor. And it will apply this conversion factor to convert from terajoules to megawatt hours to, uh, for me. So we can, we can do the calculation. And then I scroll to the right and I can see it's brought up the emission factor for me, converted into CO2 equivalent. Uh, I keep scrolling uh, and I can then see here it's done the calculation for me as well. So I've got the calculation. I then want to indicate the data quality for the activity data. Um, I'm going to say this is scaled data, but it's national data, so maybe a medium uh, for both because we've scaled the data. And the methodology is scaled national data using population and I've done the same for electricity then I'm going to select the data source um, so for this one it was birth three uh, so that's this report and for electricity um, uh, no sorry in both cases the report was was uh, NEB report because this we're reporting on the activity data um, so we've defined the activity data there and I can give an explanation here if I want to do but it's optional so for now I'm not going to so we've already completed uh, one subsector uh, for residential buildings. For scope three, we're not estimating those, it's basically plus, so we keep it as any. So let's now move to 1.2. For 1.2, it's the same. We have one uh, scope one activity, uh, and we have one scope two activity. Uh, so we do the same, it's LPG and electricity. Uh, so but this time I've got to select, there's a column here which asks me to select whether it's commercial and institutional or commercial or institutional alone or street lighting. Uh, and this is for the GCOM separation. Remember, GCOM wants to separate commercial from public emissions. In this case, I don't know. I just have one data source. So I'm going to select both commercial and institutional uh, for both activities. And they're going to select LPG again, as I did before from the drop down. I'm going to select electricity as well from the drop down and I'm going to enter my data. So we have 2000 terajoules of LPG and we have 15,000 terajoules of electricity. Again, I'm going to select my units as terajoules from the drop down. Terajoules from the drop down. I'm then going to select my gases, They're the same as before, all three gases for LPG, but just CO2 for uh, electricity and then that's just for transparency's sake. I'm going to select my emission factor EF LPG and EF elec and for electricity. I notice the units are different for electricity so I'm going to do the unit con uh, conversion uh, to megawatt hours. Okay. The tool does the rest for me um, and I'm going to complete my data quality assessment. 
Same as before, I'm just going to copy this across uh, because it's going to be the same. So medium and skilled data using, in this case, I'm going to say actually I skilled using GDP um, because it's commercial. Um, and then that's it. So we've done two sectors now. We just need just one to go, which is 1.3. 1.3, we have two gases in scope one. So we're going to select two under here, under 1.3, uh, scope one. And we have some electricity. So I'm going to select one row under scope two. OK, I'm going to select my activities. Again, it asks me the industry, uh, whether it's manufacturing, iron and steel. I have no idea what this is. So I'm going to just leave it blank for now. Um, because I don't know what that is, and I'll do the same for the other ones. Um, actually, I'm, sorry, I'm going to choose the whole sector as a whole, so it's the manufacturing sector as a whole that I'm going to choose. If you have data broken down, then use that, but in most cases, uh, that's more difficult, and, and it's fine to report for the sector as a whole. I'm going to select my fuels. Again, I'm going to select natural gas now, uh, where we have natural gas under N. That's here, and we have some diesel. So I'm going to choose diesel from D, diesel oil, and we have electricity. So I'm going to use electricity again. OK, the amount, I'm going to copy the amounts, 500 terajoules of natural gas. We have 500 terajoules of diesel and 4,000 terajoules of electricity. I'm going to select the appropriate units, which is terajoules in each of these cases. So terajoules, so you need to move this thing, uh, terajoules and the same for electricity, terajoules. Next, I'm going to select the gases. Again, for the fossil fuels, I have all three gases, CO2, CH4, and N2O. For electricity, I know I've only got CO2. Again, this is just for transparency. I'm then going to select the emission factor, EF natural gas, EF diesel, stationary energy. SE was my, my code for stationary energy, and EF for electricity. I'm then going to check the units. The, they're the same for the fossil fuels, for natural gas and diesel, but they're different for electricity. So we're going to have to use the conversion factor, two megawatt hours. Um, and again, the tool does the rest for me. I'm then going to state the data quality again is medium uh, because I'm using national data, but it's scaled. So really good quality national level. Once you scale it, it becomes the quality becomes uh, less certain. Scale national data again using GDP. I'm going to copy that across to the other sectors as well. And my data source in this case is going to be the National Energy Balance Report again. Uh, so I'm going to just wait until I can select the cell. Okay, for some reason that's not allowing me to select the drop down at the moment. So I'm just going to copy this across. OK, so select national energy balance from the drop down. And then we've pretty much completed our stationary energy sector. So now we check that all the other sectors have a notation key. So we have for this for scope three, NE for 1.1, for 1.1, for 1.2.3, it's NE for 1.3.3, it's NE. We then scroll down for 1.4. We assumed this was not occurring, so we're going to put NO. We're going to, sorry. Select NO from the drop down list. So we have NO, NO, NO. We then scroll down to 1.5. You'll see that Sirius has automatically added a default um, uh, notation key here uh, because they're not very common uh, for 1.5, for 1.6, for 1.7. For 1.8, it's left blank because often natural gas does occur in cities. And so there are often emissions associated with that. We're now going to use the, again, remember before when we, we covered on Fugitive, I said we'll use the Cirrus calculator when we come to it. We're not going to do that. Uh, it's for natural gas. So we're going to have a look again at how much natural gas we've used. You can see here we've used 500 terajoules of natural gas under 1.3.1. So next we're going to go, we're going to scroll up, uh, just as soon as my version is stopped spinning. Uh, we're going to scroll up and we're going to go to calculators. Again, follow me to calculators and to fugitive emissions. This is a very simple calculator just based on total consumption. We've got to select our development status. Am I in a developed world country or a developing world country? Uh, I'm going to select developing in this case. 
Um, and again, this is this language, you may agree with it or not, it's not very helpful in most cases, but it's the language that is currently being used uh, within this methodology, so therefore we've got to stick with it. Uh, we then scroll down to the red values, and we have the activity date, in which case this was 500 terajoules, so we select the terajoule value from here, and the tool does everything for us. In this case, it tells us the emissions associated with fugitive emissions from 500 terajoules of natural gas in the city is 671 tons of CO2 equivalent. So we remember that number, 671. We then go back to our inventory and we enter that value. Okay, so any questions on this calculator? So we simply select the development status of our country uh, in the red box here, and we select the volume of gas. We don't override any of the default values. We assume they're, they're correct. Um, and we get the value. And again, it's a very small value, so it's not going to make a big impact on, on our inventory. Uh, in fact, it's small enough that you could choose to ignore it and assume it doesn't occur. Um, but just for the sake, we're going we're gonna to add this. So 671, we then go back to our inventory. So again, at the top menu, we select on inventory. We then go back to stationary energy. And we scroll to the bottom, we go back to 1.8.1. Um, and we select one row because we have one piece of data. Uh, it's gas. Um, uh, we don't know what it is, so we'll just select. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably distribution we're going to select. Um, we have 671 in terms of the emissions, so we're going to scroll across. We're going to enter emissions data directly. We're going to ignore the activity data. We're not going to choose an emission factor. We're going to go across and we're going to go to this, these orange cells with emissions data. And this allows us to enter emissions data directly. In this case, it was 671 was a total tons of CO2 equivalent. But you'll still notice nothing copies across yet. So in this, in this, these words, nothing is copied across yet. Because we need to tell the tool to forget about the calculation and just copy the emissions data. And you do that by selecting the tick from this box. So we select the tick from this box. And once it's been selected, um, just bear with me. We'll just give it a second. But once, once, and you should see this on your screen, once you've selected the tick, it should appear in that gray uh, cell. Uh, data quality, uh, because it's uh, from a calculator, is going to be very low. Uh, the methodology. Uh, is the Cirrus calculator. Uh, and that's also the source. So you can leave the source blank because we already defined uh, the Cirrus calculator as a source. So you can see now uh, it's copied the data. Well, it's, it's selected the, the tick box and it's copied the data across into the gray cells. The gray cells are what's going to be added to your final total. And you activate this uh, by ticking the tick box because that means it says to the computer that the, the Cirrus tool Forget about the calculation, just copy the emissions data across. OK, so now we've completed station energy, so let's have a look at our results. So again, scroll back to the top. And we can go click on results uh, on the top menu. Um, and let's click on overview, which is this table. Um, and you can see that we've now had our station energy sector fully populated, um, totaling roughly 4.4 million tonnes. Um, and either showing data or showing a notation key. This has been automatically populated for you simply by adding the activity data and the emission factors, and the tool does everything for you in the right um, boxes as well. Okay, any questions on the stationary energy sector? Were you all able to follow that? OK, sounds like you were. So next, let's go back to the inventory. So click on the inventory menu and go to transportation subsector. So click on transportation and we get to the transportation subsector. OK, we're going to do the same exercise we did before. Again, I'll do this on the screen. But let me first share with you uh, the data that we'll be using for this. Um, it's in your handout and in the slide deck as well. Uh, but let me just show this on screen for you as well. OK, so for transportation, we're going to use we're going to look at two subsectors on road and railways. 
And for on road, we have two fuels, diesel and petrol. And for railways, just electricity. Again, you don't need to worry about the emission factors because we've already copied those into Cirrus file. We're simply going to look at the activity data to calculate total emissions. Um, so if you can make, make sure you've got the transportation tab open. Um, and next, let's go back into the Cirrus file um, and let's populate that data. So again, just bear with me for a second. So let's go back into Cirrus. There we are. Um, and uh, we have, uh, we're looking at 2.1.1 uh, um, and 2.2.1. So we're going to add two rows here for 2.1.1. And we're going to add one row for 2.2.2. Okay, so we've now set up our, our, our page. Um, we're going to select uh, the fuel fleet. And again, remember for the, for the CRF, they want to know if it's municipal, public, private or commercial fleet. In this case, we don't know. This is probably a combination of municipal, public, private and commercial. So we select multiple. Again, you don't have to do this. This is recommended. If you do have the breakdown, please do provide that and simply add in additional rows for the different types of fleet. So multiple, we select multiple for um, next one as well. We then select the method. In this case, we used the fuel cells approach. We based it on national fuel cells data, so fuel cells approach. Activities, the fuel type, so we select diesel and we select petrol or gasoline. Uh, we have that, where is petrol or gasoline? Yeah, motor gasoline, so we use this one. Okay, so then we have, we enter the activity data. It is 15,000 terajoules of diesel and 25, thousand terajoules of uh, petrol or gasoline. The units in this case are terajoules again. So we select terajoules, but you can see you've got lots of different um, units that you can use, and these are different to stationary energy, looking at kilometers, vehicles, um, kilowatt hours. Uh, again, it can be anything as long as um, we can convert that or it, it matches the emission factor or we can convert it into the emission factor. So then we select the emission factor in this case, we first of all report the gases. It's all three gases. So CO2, CH4 and methane uh, and NTO, sorry. We then select diesel, for EF diesel for transport. We select EF petrol uh, as well. And you can see uh, the tool does the rest for you. Um, we then assumed that um, electric vehicles uh, were included elsewhere. So we select included elsewhere in the green row for 2.1.2, we're saying, they're happening, they're so small, uh, and the charging is already included in 1.1.2. Um, in then for railways, we assumed uh, there were no diesel trains running in the city. So we select NO, not occurring for 2.2.1. And then for 2.2.2, again, we're asked to describe the fleet type. In this case, this is these are public trains. Uh, anyone can use these trains, so we select public trains. The method in this case, we use the city induced activity um, and the fuel in this case was electricity and the amount consumed was 70,000 megawatt hours. So we select uh, megawatt hours from here. Um, we then select the emission factor from here. Uh, electricity, we know it's only CO2, so we select CO2 from the gases column. Um, and in this case, we don't need to do a conversion because the units are the same megawatt hours for the emission factor and megawatt hours for the uh, fuel type. We then just need to um, complete the notation keys. So again, this was NO. Um, and we, we, we already have NE for the basic plus sources. We then scroll down for uh, the remaining three sectors. Uh, we're not reporting them. We assume they're not occurring. So. We select NO again in the green row for 2.3.1 uh, and 2.3.2, and likewise for 2.4.1 and 2.4.2. For off-road, we assume these were included elsewhere, uh, so we simply select included elsewhere. Okay, so now we've completed the notation keys and the data. Next, we just need to scroll across to the right now and 
complete the data quality assessment and the description. Again, we're using national data, uh, which is high quality, but skilled means it's probably medium quality um, for both cases, for all cases. Um, I'll let you describe methodology, the data source again, you can do that as well. But again, remember, if you've used a notation key, you should also give an explanation. So in this case, we assumed uh, we put IE included elsewhere for electric vehicles. Um, so here we can, for example, say the number of EVs considered small and charging uh, takes place at home. So included elsewhere. Uh, 1.1.2, for example. So that just told me, um, you know, I've included elsewhere. I'm telling you where I've included it in 1.1.2, and I'm telling you why I've done so. So again, purely for transparency. And for this one, for railways, for 2.1.1, or sorry, 2.2.1, we assumed they weren't occurring. So diesel trains um, not uh, running through city. So NO. Again, just a brief comment to say why you've used a notation key. OK, so that's that's so now we've done uh, the um, transportation sector. Let's quickly do waste and then we'll have a look at the final results uh, and then we'll wrap up for today. Um, so again, in the handout, if you scroll to the next slide in the handout, you've got the data for waste. So let's click in the series. Let's click on the waste uh, tab and we move on to the waste um, sector. Um, but in the case of waste, we used the Cirrus calculators and we didn't have any activity data. We didn't have any emission factors. We simply uh, have greenhouse gas emissions data. So we're just going to report that. Now for waste, we're assuming that all waste generated in boundary is treated outside of the city and there are no, uh, there's no importing of waste, just exporting of waste. So let's do the notation keys first. So for 3.1.1, that's waste generated in the city and disposed in the city. We're assuming that doesn't occur. OK, so and no. For waste generated outside, but imported in for, for treatment, we're assuming that doesn't happen either. So we're going to put NO. Let's do that for all the other three sectors as well. So NO for scope one, for the, for the two scope one sources, we're assuming there's no in boundary treatment, either of in boundary waste or of um, imported waste. So. NO for those three. And again, we'll, we can give that explanation later on. So, but first now, just copy those uh, notation keys. NO uh, for any treatment inside the city. We're assuming everything gets treated outside the city. OK, so then we have one row for each of those uh, sectors. So for um, the scope three sources, for 3.1.2, we're going to select one. For 3.2.2, we're going to select one row. For 3.3.2, you're going to select one row. And for 3.3. And sorry, 3.4.2, you're going to select one row as well. So now we've kind of set up our sheet, and now we're going to add the data. So first of all, we need to select from the drop-down boxes. This is really important to again give transparency. Uh, for a solid waste disposal, we're assuming this is landfill. Um, using the methane commitment methodology, which is what the Cirrus calculator tool uses. Uh, we're going to assume this applies to all waste. So we select all waste from the next column. Let's do the same, and, we're, and in terms of, let's do the same for um, biological treatment. We're assuming uh, this is all organic waste, and the treatment type is, is all organic waste as well. Uh, for waste incineration, uh, we're going to assume it's waste incineration, and we're going to assume this applies to all waste as well. And for wastewater, remember, we only did the calculation for domestic wastewater, so we just select uh, domestic wastewater under 3.4.2. OK, next we add the emissions data. So we scroll to the right until we see that second orange tab. And we're going to override the calculator. And we're going to tell the tool to just look at the emissions data and not to follow the calculation. Um, so we're going to select this drop down for all of them. And then we're going to add the emissions data we got from Cirrus. Uh, in this case, we got 400 thousand tons for landfill. We got 10 tons for biological treatments. We got 2000 tons for waste incineration and we got 150,000 tons from wastewater treatments. Uh, we then scroll to the right. And again, what you do is you add your data quality, uh, your description in this case, 
series calculator. And because it's a calculator, it's going to be low quality. Um, you know, it's a default calculator. It has default values in it. It's always going to be low quality. We do the same for uh, all the other ones, and we give a reason why we use a notation key. So no in boundary waste treatment facilities, for example. Okay, and we do that all across. So now we've entered the data for waste, for transportation, and for station energy. We still need to tidy up the data sources and the methodologies, but you can do that in your own time. So next, let's scroll up and let's have a look at the results. So let's click on results in the, the top menu, and that takes us to these different options. Let's have a look at the summary results first. So under the summary, uh, we can see now we have a basic inventory where we have the emissions for scope one and scope two for stationary, for scope one and scope two uh, for transportation, and for scope three for waste. And you can see how they add up. Because I've added data on population, land area, and GDP, I can also see my intensity factors here. Um, two tons per capita, eight tons per kilometer squared, and 40 tons per unit GDP, uh, for example. So this is all very useful information, but it gives me a quick overview of my results. If I wanted more detailed results, I would click on graphs, and you can see the breakdown in a pie chart between the different sectors, stationary being the biggest sector, followed by transportation, followed by waste. You can see here how the emissions break down by subsector um, and by scope. And we can see the single biggest source is actually scope one emissions from on-road transportation, followed by uh, scope two in commercial and institutional buildings with waste emissions being fairly small and railways uh, contributing very little in terms of overall emissions. We scroll down for a waterfall chart which shows um, how your total emissions of, of 8 million tonnes is, 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 is made up of. So again, a bit from residential, a bit from commercial and manufacturing, but mostly again from on-road transportation. So it breaks the emissions down between the different subsectors. And this shows my emissions by, sec by scope. So some scope one emissions, mostly scope two, and some scope three. This is from waste, obviously. This is electricity, and this is combustion of primary fuels. Okay, so that's the results page, and then we finally go to overview, um, and we can see that table that we went through um, this, 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 this afternoon already, uh, with everything broken down um, by uh, for, for stationary, for transportation, and for waste. And what you can see is everything either has data or a notation key, and that means it's complete. Always look at this table, and if you see any empty cells, then wonder, should there be data or should there be a notation key? Um, and then at the top, you can see what we've done here is, um, we now have our basic total, which is almost 8 million tons of carbon dioxide, broken down by sector um, and by scope. So that's your Cirrus inventory, that's your Cirrus tool, and that's how you use it and how you get your results uh, in the format that you want it for your GPC and uh, CRF reporting. Again, here in this final page, you've got the data populated um, as per, um, so this is the wrong one, we need to, yeah, sorry. As per the CRF, again, it, it copies the data across in the same way um, that you would do, uh, that, that it does for a GPC. Okay, so let me stop there and see if there are any questions on the use of the Cirrus tool. Michael, could we have a look at the uh, emission factors page? Yeah, let me, uh, yes, in, in Cirrus, let me just open that for you quickly, sorry. Um, share my screen. And I'll share this version with you as well, so you can compare if you, if you wanted to. Uh, so emission factors page here, for example. So we have uh, the six fuels that we used. I gave them six unique names. Um, they were reported in greenhouse gases, so I selected greenhouse gas, not CO2E. Um, because if I say greenhouse gas, then it does the conversion using the global warming potential factors. I tell the tool which factor to use, what the units are, and then it and then I and I in the white cells I document um, the emission factor as reported to me in the original units. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to do a multiple year, do you have to create a new emission factor? You can use the same 
If you if you want to if you, so if you if you want to if you want to have if you want to use one 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 fuel but two emission factors you would create two entries. So for example, I could create a second LPG one and say uh, EF LPG 2017, and then this could be EF LPG 2016, for example. So you can enter as many unique emission factors in here as you want, and then yeah. simply this is this is how you'll use it. So always make sure you give it a good reference point. This can be a very long database. Uh, you may not need all of them, but it might be useful for you to have them in here. Um, but this is where you would define all your emission factors, correct? Uh, notice the total CO2 is left empty, so it's not, not required. No, so I would always, if you have if you have the data for the individual gases, then then report them as individual gases. Um, if you, oh, okay. sometimes you'll find an emission factor which is just in CO2 equivalent. It doesn't, you don't, you, you can't find the data for CO2 or methane or oxide. it just gives you one value. If that is the case, then you can just put it in here. But if you do use this one, leave these three blanks. So either break them down by gas or uh, report a combined emission factor, which you do find sometimes. Most cases you'll get them broken down by individual gas, but sometimes they are combined. If that is the case, just enter the combined emission factor and leave the other three columns blank. Mm, okay. So for electricity, we can define it as CO2 E, and then you just fill up the total CO2. But well, yeah, you, you could you, mm. you could. But remember, we had the discussion earlier on. Yeah, um, the emission yeah. factor Only includes CO2. CO2. So yeah. the total won't make a difference. But just in terms of completeness, if it's CO2 E, it would indicate that you've also actually it also includes methane and nitrous oxide. We know it doesn't, so it's better just to report it under CO2. Uh, which tells us that you know we're 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 still missing these these two bits. Um, so yeah, just put in the put in the column that fits best. It won't impact on the calculation, um, but it just it's 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 better reporting. Okay. Okay. So in the last minute, let me just quickly share with you. Go back to the the slide deck, and this includes your homework, which no doubt you're all very excited. Uh, to see. Um, so just first of all, if you're able to follow all of that, um, sorry, just one second. There we go. Then you, yeah, you get this results table, then congratulations. Again, as I mentioned, I'll share my Cirrus file with you so you can compare, uh, but that is an inventory in Cirrus. Um, again, you might want to change the data, you probably will, but it is an inventory in Cirrus. Um, so next for practical part B, which is your homework, what I would like you to do is to um, add the IPPU and the FOLU data from module F uh, in there, uh, just to get some basic plus sources in there as well. Um, and then for your own inventory, um, update the station energy with your data from module C um, and data for transportation and for the waste module or use any of the data that you want to use yourself. So begin to, in this case, we used data that I extracted from, from my calculations um, for a made up boundary. But in this case, what I'd like you to do is to update the Cirrus file with data for your city. So go back to module C, module D and module E and copy that data across uh, into the Cirrus file to create your own inventory. Then finally at the end, what I'd like you to do is to review your results and just discuss, do, do these results make sense? Are they what I expected? Are there any outliers? Um, and begin to question your data a bit. Um, but as I mentioned, what I'll do, I'll share with you my completed workbook data, uh, so you can compare your workbook results against my workbook results. Um, I'll send you um, my completed Cirrus file, so you can compare your Cirrus file against my Cirrus file. But then what, what I'd like you to do, uh, again, not, not today or tomorrow, but, but certainly the, hopefully this week, is to begin to update your, your Cirrus file with your own data. Uh, you've got a good start now. You've defined your boundary. You've defined a few uh, sectors already, set them up. Um, but please add additional data from your exercises um, and add additional rows for additional fuel sources and update the emissions data uh, accordingly. Um, so that's your homework. Um, there's some some further, further guidance here. Um, but um, yeah, if you could do that, that would be that would be great. And it really uh, will mean that you're uh, very uh, 
you should be very confident and able using Cirrus file and you have one already produced for your city. So quick summary, today we uh, covered um, Cirrus, we gave an overview, I gave you a demonstration on how to use Cirrus and we then did an exercise using Cirrus um, and you've got a practical task to take home with you. And that takes us to the final module, which we'll cover on Wednesday, which is now that we have an inventory, how do we manage it? How do we communicate it and how do we use it? Um, so we'll spend a bit of time on Wednesday going through Cirrus again, but most of the time we'll be discussing how do we apply, how do we use the inventory uh, in, our, uh, in, our, in our work within our city governments uh, to affect action and to actually make use of the data and make sure the inventory is kept up to date and as accurate and complete as possible. With that, uh, Deep, I'll hand back over to you for any remaining questions. All right, uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, any questions from the participants? So I'll encourage everyone to uh, complete the uh, series workbook, all right? Uh, data that we learned today and also the data from the workbook. So you don't have to submit your workbook anymore. You just complete your workbook, your data, and then just populate the data in the uh, uh, series uh, spreadsheet. And also, I would like to encourage uh, cities who are already active doing uh, inventories. Uh, you can actually compute, start computing the data from your inventories into the series spreadsheet, and then you can uh, compare uh, and see what, where the differences between your inventory and also the uh, series two. All right. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you, everyone, for staying all the way to 5.30. So we have one more session left, which is on Wednesday, and then we are, uh, we are done with the uh, training. All right. Um, all right. See you. See everyone on Wednesday. Okay, thank thank you. you. See you Wednesday, everyone.